Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Bless you, Jesus. We have come to the end of ourselves. Take over, Jehovah. We have touched the end of ourselves. Take over now, Jehovah. We have come to the end of ourselves. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have come to the end of ourselves. So take over, take over. We have come to the end of ourselves. Take over, take over, we have come to the end of us. Can you personalize it? Take over, Lord, take over, I have come to the end of myself. Take over, yeah. take over, we have come to the end of The voices the sing it from your heart come on take over take over lord we have come to the end of ourselves take over when you come to the end take of yourself over. then you will see his glory come to the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah It's a powerful song of dedication. You will always rejoice when you come to the end of yourself. That's when flesh dies and you release the spirit. Hey, take over, yeah. Lord, we have come to the end of ourselves. Take over, take over. We have come to the end. about to share in this few minutes i pray from my heart that it will change you and set you on fire i pray that it will change you i pray that it will change you and do something remarkable in your life hallelujah praise the lord let's get to the word of god 
bless you. It's good to have everyone around. Make sure you have something to write. The presence of God is mighty in this place. Hallelujah. I want to teach on something very powerful. I want to share with you a very big secret tonight. And for as many who will consider it to be valuable, I pray that many years from now it will make you a sign and a wonder. Because I am aware by now that not everybody is really interested in the things of the Spirit. Just leave her alone. Hallelujah. There will be a lot of impartations tonight because of what I'm about to teach. Hallelujah. I want you to be sensitive. Open your eyes. Will you open your ears? And then you'll understand that His presence is here. Open your eyes. If you open your ears, then you'll understand that the Lord is here. Hallelujah. I want to teach tonight on the price for an extraordinary anointing. Never, never trivialize what you're about to hear. I'm here to preach my heart to you tonight. And I pray that somebody will take this seriously. May this message set somebody on fire. May this message answer the question somebody's heart. The price for an extraordinary anointing. Hallelujah. I've always wondered why certain people in this life seemed to be unusually extraordinary. Hallelujah. Why certain sportsmen were better than others. Why certain musicians and artists were better than others? Why certain preachers, men and women of God? What brought the power and the anointing of the Spirit so mightily upon their lives? When you read through church history, you will see an archive of men that walked like gods upon the earth. Now there were others who did nice, great things little thing here and there but there were others who were too extraordinary to be neglected they shook cities single-handedly there was there was such a degree of the demonstration of the holy spirit upon their lives hallelujah and i made up my mind years ago that my life was not going to be extraordinary my life was not going to be normal sorry I made up my mind years ago that I was going to live an extremely extraordinary life. Hallelujah. I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, if you have done these things with the people that have gone ahead of us, and yet you said there is a generation that will do more, I want to be that generation. Every time I picked up my Bible and I read the things that the Word of God said would happen, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he also do, and greater works. And I carried my Bible and said, Lord, do you really mean this? Hallelujah. And I began to study the life of extraordinary people. I have spent a major part of my life studying extraordinary people in every area of life every area finance ministry leadership 
what made them so extraordinary because i don't want to be a mediocre jesus was born in a manger but when he was leaving heaven there was a crowd to celebrate his departure and i'm very disturbed and i must say this at the complacency that is upon especially preachers in the body of christ there is a very low standard that many men and women of god especially around this country have set for themselves there is no pressure to go the extra mile and do amazing things for the kingdom hallelujah when i listen to certain preachers the presence of god that came out of their lives were amazing it was compelling you could not deny that these people knew the holy spirit are you listening to me very very powerful and one time i listened to william branham when i listened to his message i was shaking and the holy spirit told me abel though dead yet speaketh what kind of anointing did men like elisha carry that although they were dead a dead body meandered that place and suddenly jacked up are there such people in the earth today are you listening to me am i challenging somebody for desperate people do desperate things and we're pressing in there's gotta be more gotta be more there's gotta be more than this for desperate people do desperate things and we're pressing on there's gotta be more gotta be more Help me sing. It's gotta be more than this. We are the desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. We are the desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. Cause I'm tired of the status quo. There's gotta be more than this. Listen. There's got to be more than what we are watching on our television. Are you listening to me? There's got to be more than what we celebrate as ministry and power today. There's got to be more. This cannot be all of God. Certain people have become examples to let us know that there are possibilities that are obtained in God. It's just that the standard is high. The Bible says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? He lives in a hill and whoever will climb there will access some things. He said he shall receive a reward from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. I studied Ezekiel 47 and it challenged me. The Bible says out of the east side of the temple a river came out. And he said an angel measured a thousand cubits and it was to my ankles. That's a level. That's a measure of the anointing. But he didn't stop there. He said he measured another thousand cubits. And then it was to my knees. And the man would have chosen to stop there. But he said I will go for more. And he measured a thousand cubits. And it was to his loins. And he said although this is great. By now you are a celebrity. You are on every television. But he said there is still more. And the Bible says he measured a thousand cubits. And it was a river. A, an overflowing river and the bible says wherever that river went the fish that was dead would come alive hallelujah my anthem every time is that there is more there is more if you're a lukewarm person who does not have any pressure to press you won't be my friend you won't like me my life will offend you The price for an extraordinary anointing. I made certain vows with my life. 
that I was going to leave a mark upon this earth. Before I go to be with the Lord or He comes to find me working. I made up my mind that I was not just going to be that preacher with a nice congregation and just having people and join the rat race of preachers fighting themselves and doing things as if the anointing has finished. Quarreling and writing things about them. No! That kind of life is for people who have refused to press higher. Hallelujah. See, let me tell you something. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is God's energy. The anointing is God's ability to do work. Just like in physics, we define energy or we define power as the ability to do work per time. That's the definition of the anointing. The power of the Holy Ghost. Resident in a man that causes the man to produce extraordinary results. The Bible says in Isaiah 20, 10, 27, it says, It shall come to pass in that day. Which day? The day you are interested enough to enter that dimension with the Spirit. That the burden shall be lifted from off thy neck and the yoke from thy shoulder. And it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. There are many preachers that go into ministry without the anointing. Many people trying to work for God. Many people trying to be great without the anointing. You have no ministry without the anointing. The anointing of the spirit is God's agency. His ability that can be resident in a man. Causing that man to do extraordinary things. And if that ability is not in you, you cannot pretend it's there when it's not there. Because it speaks. Hallelujah. Every time I watch television, I get blessed, but I get disturbed in my spirit. When I see the satisfaction that is upon men of God as they preach, in my mind I'm saying, is this, was this the whole vision that they saw when they began with God? If no, what happened on the way? And then one time the Lord began to speak to me about the extraordinary anointing. And the Lord told me something that shocked me. He said, son, it is not up to me. It is entirely up to you to determine how far you want to go in the anointing. Many people think it's just God. He brings it whenever he wants. And if God likes you, he will just give it to you. If anybody has preached that to you, I'm telling you right now, right now, that is not true. Psalms 89 says, I have found my servant David. He had to make himself available. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. Hallelujah. Every time we watch extraordinary people during the Olympic, the attention of the whole world were on a few who did extraordinary things. Their age, their gender, their race, their background, notwithstanding. The world has always stood in honor of extraordinary people. Ordinary people have not done anything to the world. When they give people Nobel Prize, it's because they did extraordinary things. Hallelujah. And I want to challenge you tonight that there is a dimension in God that you can press into and you will access not just an anointing, an extraordinary anointing. There are many people who claim to be prophets in this country and you see that they, they are really called but they have not contended to those dimensions in God. They are prophets who look like pastors or deacons. No pressure to contend for the deep things of the spirit. I was studying the gospels and I started crying. You know why I cried? Because in Bible times, all people needed to do was to locate Jesus Christ or any environment where he was around. Whether or not they would be healed was not the issue. They knew that once they saw Jesus Christ, that was it. Powerful dimension of grace. At what level in the church will people say, all I need to do, take me to that place. When I get there, I will find God. When I get there, no matter what the problem is, there must be a solution. Right now, to get to a place where a man of God is, is only the first question answered. The second question is to hope. 
hope that at least God will attend to me. And every time this is my cry, I say, Lord, don't send me if I'm going to be an ordinary person. Hallelujah. Someone spoke to me one day and said, Josh, I think you need to go on air. I said, me? I will never go on air until I have a message for the body of Christ. Are you hearing me? I'm not going to go on air and have somebody scroll my channel and say, wow, he's a nice man of God next. No, no, no. There's got to be something extraordinary. This is what I, I made up my mind that will never officially begin to record koinonia messages until there was something that was substantial enough for the body of Christ to have. There are many people writing books and tapes that are empty. They have no power and no ability. They are just psychological jargons. No power to change people. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Bible says, with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says that he had the spirit without measure. And he went about doing good and healing all day that were oppressed of the devil. Acts 10, 38. I made up my mind that I was going to explore. See, can I tell you the truth? As far as I'm concerned, I've not started ministry yet. I feel very sad when I see a lot of people. They don't say I've been five years in ministry, seven years. I tell them, keep quiet. What is ministry? Ministry is representing God, being an ambassador. How much? What have you done? What mark have you made? When I begin ministry, the world will know. The Bible says John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. Many people just get up, they start churches, they gather people, they have no message. They have no nothing. What do you have that has not been heard before? The Bible says there is a path which no fowl knoweth, and a path which the feet of the lion has not trodden. Many men of God, what is happening in this country is just a repetition, copy and paste of spiritual things. There is no new. But the Bible says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. See, behold, I do a new thing. Hallelujah. Nelson Mandela became sick and he kept the world at a standstill. Christians, non-Christian, and everybody was praying. When Obama came, he had to go and visit him. Listen, this is, this is amazing. What made him an extraordinary leader? My, my first challenge for you tonight is that you must refuse to be ordinary in life. I want to challenge you. You must refuse. It's a determination. It's a decision. I refuse to be extraordinary. Call it pride. I don't care. Hallelujah. There is a level where you can gain hold of an extraordinary anointing it will produce an extraordinary ministry it will produce an extraordinary life kenneth hagin of blessed memory a man who lived an extraordinary life he had such a, a mighty anointing upon him william branham i watched the video of jaco and they brought a lady who had cancer are you following me now it was it was a growth it was swollen I watched it. It's not like they told me. This guy held it and peeled it away. He was even sitting on a chair. He held it, peeled the cancer away. No blood. He was showing people. What is our boasting? What is our bragging for? I made up my mind I will never officially celebrate my birthday until I have a reason to celebrate birthdays is not a celebration of the day you were born. It was a celebration of, for what you are doing, what you were called to do, what you are living for. Are you listening to me? When I watch the videos of these people, I, I get broken. Mighty men! William Branham would move and because of the degree of anointing that was upon him, a hollow will move together with him. 
Ketun Kuman was so full of the Holy Ghost. She carried the anointing to a point that one time on stage she had crossed the stage yet she was still floating. She didn't even realize it. Who through faith subdued kingdoms? Who are these men? Who are this strange breed of people that defied the ordinary status quo of their days and told themselves they were going to press? The difference between extraordinary, listen to me please, the difference between extraordinary and ordinary is that word, extra. Hallelujah. Every time I want to counsel people, I just say, Lord, are these people going to gather and I'll just waste their time? Or will they really receive something? Can I tell you something? The body of Christ is so frustrated. Many people are frustrated because preachers make a lot of mouth about things they have no anointing to defend. Hallelujah. A lot of preachers come and we brag and we make all kinds of noise. Oh, if God doesn't heal you, you don't have faith. Blah, 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 blah. And now the sick people come and they go back. And then they run to herbalists. And we have, we carry our big mouths and we criticize them. When the herbalist in a village is doing what a preacher has refused to do. And people are desperate for help, they will do anything including leaving your church or your ministry and they'll find solutions are you listening to me jesus climbed the mountain a crowd followed him there jesus went to the wilderness a crowd followed him there he was in a room the bible says a whole city came and filled there men who knew that they were going to get substance there is a lot of wastage happening in the body of christ men and women of god just joking around and playing around and the the circumference of all what we call anointing the moment a man of god's dream is to get to the point where you can touch somebody or blow air and somebody falls it's enough demonstration to people that you are anointed people fall down get up and clean themselves nothing changes hallelujah there are certain meetings in my life I entered some of those meetings just once, but I will never forget. Hallelujah. Never forget. T.L. Osborne entered only one meeting. One meeting of William Branham. Just one. And it set him on fire forever. Just one. I told God, I said, Lord, the deadline for transformation in any life in Koinonia is two meetings. Two meetings. Every time I pray, I said, Lord, let it not be that somebody will come for koinonia at least twice and not be changed and you ask the person how was service say wow it was nice but that somebody will come and at the end of it he cannot even talk the person is just on his way going and you're saying what happened he said i can't i can't begin to describe the impartation i don't know if it was impartation i got or revelation i got i don't know i know that i got something you'll be like a snake that swallowed something else it can't move until after some days where you know that god is in this place there are people seated here who are sick there are people who are oppressed And we men of God feel it's not an issue. And, and you know, shame on we preachers to an extent that whenever you see people being delivered and free, men of God begin to get angry and criticize. This is how much we are not even interested in the agenda of God. Someone gets free, someone gets delivered. See, let me tell you something. I made up my mind. The Bible says, he who walks with the wise shall be what? He who walks with the great shall be what? He who walks with the extraordinary shall be what? I love everybody, but I will not follow everybody. I am determined to make sure that a lot will be done for the kingdom of God in my lifetime. 
This is why there is no satisfaction. I've had one or two awards that were given to me. You will never find them on my table. Those things are deceitful. Very deceitful. Award that a few people just came together and said, take, you did this and that. You now place it and you are smiling and it's lying to you. See, when I was in secondary school, it was in a local government where, you know, many people were not even serious with their studies. So we're the best, we're the best school in that local government. What we call local champion. If we came for debate in your school, just start crying by that standard. Hallelujah. Until we made up our minds one day to visit a school that was used to competing with people going state by state. That day, they showed us that the ceiling of somebody else can be the foundation of the next building. Hallelujah. When I came back, listen, when I came back from that debate, I was ashamed of myself. I ran to the state library. I had been the best student in my class until I tried writing jam mats. After five hours, I got four. Four. One, two, three, four. I checked the back of jam brochure. And they said there were certain people that got 300 and something. I said, Joshua Selma, you are joking. Many of us have lived in circles that have lied to us too much. We think the whole world is like our little community. Hallelujah. That's how many men of God are. They, they have surrounded themselves by, with psychophants and liars who make them feel they have every anointing in the world. Then one day you go and try something that you don't have grace for. And you receive a root shock. Then you begin to say it's not true. This thing didn't work for me. Anybody that is doing it is not of God. This is fake. Shut up. That you are lazy and you are not pressing does not mean everybody has refused to press. There are people who will not stop. Are you listening to me? The price for an extraordinary anointing. There can be more than what you have seen. There can be more. There can be more. Many of us stopped pursuing God the day somebody fell down under the anointing. You don't know whether it was you or it was the person's prayer. You just know it happened around you. From that day, you were convinced. Whenever you go for meetings and they are ministering to people, you are waiting for them to say, ministers, come and lay hands. They say, ministers, you get up. What do you have? What do you have? How many? How many of it? He said, listen. He said, what do you have in your house? He said, I won't lie, I have something, but it's little. Sometimes you need to accept that you have, but what you have is not enough. The woman said, I have oil, but it's in a small cruise. The prophet said, all right, let me show you something that can expand the oil for you. She never would have believed that there can be more. Hallelujah. I get very, very, I get very disturbed. When I see people go for meetings and to worsen the case, you want to see the disorganization of men of God wait until the anointing begins to break out in the meeting. Every man of God's body is itching him. Everybody wants to hold the mic. God has not finished or just wait. There, there, there are some people there at the back, at the back. All these, all these things we are doing. For 10 minutes you are talking. You are just, it's like starting a generator. Go and sit down. There are certain people, Catherine Kuman, before she got to the venue of the meeting, kilometers away, people started falling under the anointing. This is how they knew Catherine Kuman was coming. One time she finished the meeting and they were pressing her and they had to follow her through a kitchen door. The moment they opened the door, all the chefs, all of them were under the anointing until she passed. She was not praying. This was her default state. Hallelujah. Am I challenging you tonight? Sometimes when people call me to come and minister, as soon as I finish the ministration, I don't even want to hear any comments because I have to run. In my mind, I've left Zaria. In my mind, I've left Nigeria. I will not be fooled. 
the future of ENI is in that letter I, international. If you think what we have now is enough to feed the world, go and sit down. How many of you have seen people produce poster? And when you are seeing it on the laptop, you think that's the best poster you have produced. It's when you print it out and paste it, you will see that it's as ordinary as the ones around. I refuse to be ordinary. There is a realm in God. Listen, can I tell you, when you hit that realm, you will start resting. You have entered the Sabbath of greatness. You will rest. Until you get to the seventh day, do not rest. I'm going to share with you four keys. Number one. This is not what I'm just preaching. These are keys that I've made up my mind that they'll be part of my life. Can I tell you something? Look at me. God is challenging some of you tonight. Some of you have not backslided, but you have, not, you have stopped growing. You've not backslided, but you are, there are many preachers in Nigeria that have stopped growing. They've not gone back, but they are in the same realm for a long time. It's just because where they have gotten to is, is substantially great. And it has been able to achieve one or two things. May your life produce a wonder that the world has not seen. May your life be the vehicle that God will reveal the more part of him that many people have not seen. Number one. You want to have an extraordinary anointing. The first price to pay is the price of consecration. The price of consecration. I will run very fast. Joshua 3 verse 5. The price of consecration. You don't hear this message is preached in church. Many people don't care. When I talk of consecration, I'm not just talking about run away from ladies. No, no, no. That's not even what I'm talking about. Consecration. To consecrate means to set apart. Consecration requires absolute surrender. Joshua 3 verse 5. Joshua 3. Verse 5. If you want the Lord to do mighty things through your life, can we read it? One to read. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves. If you do that, what will happen? Tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. You want to see wonders in your life? The first key is the price of consecration. Consecration requires absolute surrender everybody say absolute surrender you will never have the extraordinary anointing when you have your own agenda you just want to use god's anointing to do your own agenda uh -uh. when god calls you his first assignment is to kill you you die to yourself to your ambitions listen you do not know the degree of surrender that brings authentic power and anointing how many of you remember that gentleman, Sadiq Ibrahim? Some of you will remember him. He was right here in Koinonia. This guy wanted to be, he was in a group called Highlanders in Port Harcourt. Very serious occultic group. And he wanted the power of invincibility. He wanted to be able to do great things. When he met the Habalist, the Habalist told him, you have to consecrate yourself. For three days, and three nights, he was lying down in a graveyard. His eyes did not see any man. I'm telling you how the devil gives people power. Three days, he said in the night, he will see people come out of graves and move. And you were not supposed to shift. They will touch him. He said, many of you do not know that the anointing comes with a price. That's why you see, when you talk against a man who is truly anointed, whether you are right or wrong, God will punish you. Are you listening to me? Absolute surrender. 
consecration requires enduring the pain of being different. Oh, it's painful to be different. Let me tell you. It's painful to ride a different, a different plane of life. When everybody is going this way. When this is their definition of success. Moses was in the backside for 40 years. When his age mates were ruling in Egypt. He left the luxury of Egypt to prepare for an extraordinary ministry. 40 years. At the end of it, he came back to Egypt. He said, I'm ready. Oh, you can know you are ready. And it will not be pride. You can know you are ready. There is a time called the season of appearance. Are you, are you listening to me? Years ago, I hope I'll be able to share a few stories today about myself. Years ago, when I started preparing, when the Lord showed me the visions of the extraordinary things I'll be doing, in my mind I said, Lord, will people believe these things? And then the Lord began, sometimes the Lord will hold me in a room. Three days have not come out. My eyes have not seen the light. Three days. I would stay there just praying. Sometimes sleeping, I would wake up and I would lie down. And a mist, like a cloud, will literally come into the room by the shape of a man. A real mist, I'm not talking of some metaphysics hallucination. If you are seeing it, you are seeing it. If it's like it is not there, you are either seeing it. This is Sam. This is music director. Hallelujah. I had very strange experiences. And I knew that this was a preparation for an extraordinary ministry. Many of you, this is what has been happening to you. Hallelujah. But nobody has told you. They've not encouraged you to know. Are you, are you listening to me? Many of you, you don't even know. And you are not serious because you started joining people. You now want to run and go and start a church or a fellowship. You've not even done anything. Ella, you'll be my secretary. Matilda, you'll be the PA. You are the one who will bath me. You are the one who will dress me. You will be going to the restaurant for me. Say, God gave me a commission. He said, now my son, arise and raise me a generation. Sit down. He said, arise from his perspective. See, let me tell you something about the word of God. God speaks from the realm of eternity. Everybody say eternity. He speaks from the realm of eternity. There is no time. So when the word comes to you, it comes with such a strong urgency, you think you should get up and go immediately. You must sit down and find the time component of every prophecy. That's why when prophets heard from God, they said, according to the time of life. Are, are you following me? Thank you, Jesus. It's painful to stand out. Listen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's painful to stand out. It's painful to be unusual. It's painful to be controversial. If you are not ready, forget about an extraordinary anointing. These are strange and rare people. That's why many people cannot make it to that list. They are too conscious of themselves. You must die to yourself to carry an extraordinary anointing. They will talk about you. They, we are speaking about Satan and Jesus at the same time. Two extremes. No matter, you will have to be in between two of them. Different in your life. Different in your mindset. There are ways they do things in your house. Now you make up your mind and say, no way. These sacrifices and this idolatry and the rest count me out. This is not going to be part of my life. I'm preparing for an extraordinary life. And people look at you. Say, so this thing has been there for how many years? Until the reward comes, you will look foolish. So let it not be strange to you. When you get to this realm, you will die to yourself. Literally. Everybody say the price of consecration. Many people do not like this. You know what? See. One of the biggest problems with the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, especially the American church, and now it's coming into Nigeria, we love comfort too much. Are you listening to me? 
the Holy Spirit is called the comforter. But listen, I need you to know that any sensible man knows that you don't get comfort from day one. When they give birth to a child, the first thing he receives is a slap. That's a sign to show that he's alive. Are you hearing me? Many people want pampering. We have built churches that want pampering. You say something that is striking. People say, we don't like this kind of preaching. No? We'll stop sowing into this ministry. And the man of God said, alright, we'll, we'll, we'll think of how to, to arrange it. May Koinonia never become the place that will water down truth because we are looking for money. Hallelujah. Everybody say the price of consecration. Before David was anointed, Psalm 89 said, I have found. Do you know what it means for God to find a man? The psalmist said, where can we hide from your presence? Yet God is saying, finally I have found you. Because many people just want comfort. We want to use the anointing of God to accomplish our own agenda. And so the first thing is you must die to yourself and die to your agenda. I was listening to Benny Hinn. He was talking to some youths. And he was telling them, he said, look, you people do not know the price that brought this level of anointing to my life. He said, I don't know the, name of, the names of footballers. I don't know the names of music artists. He said one time his son asked him to take him to a basketball place. He said when he got there and he saw people jumping, he could not understand what they were enjoying. The anointing will change you. It will make you strange. People will say you didn't used to be like this. Where has your social life gone to? What happened? You will find it in the future. Give it up now. There are pastors who do visitation from Sunday to Sunday. Even Sunday morning, they quickly visit a rich man's house before they run to church. And then they believe that they are going to get an extraordinary ministry. And then many people now want methods. Young Cho went to preach somewhere. He pastors one of the largest churches in the world. Hallelujah. And many Americans just sat out with their notepad. They believe he was going to give them 31 guaranteed methods. You know, this is what we like now. Do this. Add A to B to C. This will happen. Young Cho came up. He doesn't speak English too well. Paraphrase him. He said, you people don't pray. You are not serious. You just sit down. You want the anointing. And he went and sat down. That was the end of his message. It was a prophetic rebuke. Authentic prophetic Bible type prophetic rebuke. Hallelujah. That was the message. He who had an ear in that meeting should hear. And go back to the secret place. We like methods. Right now we read all kinds of psychological books. Unbelievers are writing books to govern church ministry. How to attract a crowd. 20 quick ways. Guaranteed. And many gullible men of God who are lazy, just get up. You see them watching CDs. You would think it's something that will provoke them. A motivational speaker sits down. He says, when you come, start with a story. When you start with a story, use an example. When you do that, do this and that. You tried it, it didn't work because you are in Nigeria. Everybody say it. Nigeria. Nigerians have not been trained to tolerate nonsense. We are coming out from witchcraft straight. We are looking for something authentic. You don't come and tell people these jargons and junks. They will manage it for two days. They will laugh. We'll, we'll, when it gets bad, they will call you and say, Pastor, I sow the seed. I prayed. It's not working. If you don't respond to me by next week, you will see me in your church again. Hallelujah. The price of consecration. Listen. Every great man knows that you must give up something to go up. Did you hear what I'm saying? You must give up something to go up. Politicians know this. By 1 a.m., you are sleeping. A politician is in a herbalist house just to get little political office. What has made the body of Christ so lazy? I believe in seed faith. But let me tell you the truth. If you want an extraordinary life, it's beyond money. 
are you listening to me it's even beyond impartation a time will come you must dig your own well your customized dealing with the spirit when you get it you will know those who are having what is not it If you are the best student in your class and you see the dullest student getting 99, you know something happened. Because you know what you are doing that makes you the best. Hallelujah. Many believers cannot detect error because they themselves have not entered the substance. Hallelujah. The price of consecration. Revelations 18 verse 4. Revelations 18 verse 4. Powerful statement. He said, come out of her my people. That you will not partake of her sins. That her plague will not come upon you. The Lord is speaking to his bride. He said, come out of her my people. Come out of that status quo. Hallelujah. And I heard a voice. Another voice from heaven saying... Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye not receive her plagues. Everybody say, I'm coming out. Refuse it. Refuse it. You want to be a man of God? You better, some of you are attracted at the vanities. You're, you spend day and night browsing church structures. You believe that is how to be in ministry. Hallelujah. Browsing church structures. And then you finish, you say, this is the car. And you gum it in your room and keep speaking it. The car that will carry me. Look, let me tell you something. Faith is not foolishness. Sit down and pay the price and tell the Lord, search my heart. There are tendencies. I don't know how it will be the day I see 500 members who are loyal to you and can open up their spirit. The price of consecration. You cannot want to live like any other person. I say it with all humility. You will not find me around just gallivanting around. You say, what are you doing? Say, today is a happy day. I just feel like strolling. I'm at the season of my life where I am still at the preparation stage for an extraordinary life. The moment I finish preaching in Koinonia, I run back and lectures continue. I'm in the school of the spirit. No amount of manifestation will stop it. When I go home, I just get on my knees and I say, Lord, I thank you for what you did. I thank you for the mighty things that happened. And the Lord says, let's continue. Well done, but let's continue. The journey is still far. Everybody say, I choose to sanctify myself. Say it, I choose to sanctify myself. There are many things that take our attention in the body of Christ. Computer games. Some of you is movies. You can watch movie from morning. You only stop to eat lunch. Immediately you finish. Which part? Which part? Did I watch that guy? Has, has a lady finally told him yes? Which part? You just come and sit down. The food will burn there. Later I say, off it for me, please. And they ask you, say, what do you want to become? He say, like Benny Hinn. Huh? Hallelujah. An extraordinary life. Listen, let me tell you. You must prepare for an extraordinary life. That's why oftentimes God will separate people away. He took Moses in the wilderness. He was alone. The price of consecration. Second Timothy 2. The last scripture. Let's run. Verse 19 to 21. The Bible says, Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The next verse says, But in a great house, there are not only vessels, listen, not only vessels of gold and silver, but vessels of wood and clay, or some versions say earth. It says, Some are unto honor. That means it's your choice. There are vessels in a great house. But not every vessel is unto honor. He says some are unto honor. 
And some are unto what? Dishonor. Here's the condition. He said, if a man will purge, separate, consecrate, sanctify himself, he said, that man will be a vessel unto honor, meat, fit, prepared, equipped for the master's use. Say, I'm a vessel unto honor. The price of consecration. The price of consecration. There are many of you, every time you hear the word price, you don't like it. Let's drink ice cream. Hallelujah. Do you have money? No, 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 no. Don't mention it. We, we hate anything that has to do with price. The Bible says, Romans chapter 8 from verse 18. It says, I reckon, I come to terms with this fact that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you. That's what the Bible says. I reckon that the sufferings, that means there are temporary setbacks. The sufferings of this present time. What time? The time of your preparation. It's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you. Verse 19 says, For the endless expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Number two, the price of revelation and real intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You want an extraordinary anointing? This is the second price. The price of revelation. The price of revelation and real intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You will never be able to live an extraordinary life. You can never have an extraordinary ministry. If you do not know the person of the Holy Spirit. And you do not have revelation. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17 to 19. Paul began to pray and say for this cause. I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom. And revelation in the knowledge of him. 18 says. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That ye may know. Enlightenment. You want to be great in life, you must go for knowledge. You must go for knowledge. You must go for knowledge. Are you hearing me? You must go for knowledge. You can't be great in ignorance. No. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, it says my people perish for lack of knowledge. Satan is only as powerful as our ignorance will allow him. Success is very predictable when you understand the laws that govern it. Knowledge. Many of us don't go for revelation. You don't contend. You must become a student of the Bible if you want an extraordinary anointing. Are you listening to me? You must become a student, not just a recipient. Many of us want things from God, but we are not serious with the word of God. How amiable are your word, O oh Lord? They are my meditation all day long. I'm obsessed with the word of God. I think the word of God. My conversations are governed after the word. And I'm not just doing it to preach. If you are just preparing sermons, people will know. You can't pretend it forever. He said, thy word, O oh God, have I hidden in my heart. This is how you prepare for an extraordinary life. Be full of the word. Be full of the word. Be full of the word. You want an extraordinary life? Get back to the Bible. Go and sit down. Beyond morning devotion. My son, pay attention to my words. Proverbs 4. Incline your ears to my sayings. The Bible says, Do not let them depart from out of thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He said they are life to those who find them. That means not everybody is interested. But they are life to those who find them. And health to their flesh. The Bible says forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Hebrews 11 from verse 1. The Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. He said for by it the elders obtained a good report. The Bible says through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The worlds were framed by the word of God. The price of revelation. People who are extraordinarily anointed are men of the word. 
when you see a man who is anointed, when I talk of the word, I'm not talking of quoting the word. You will know they submit to the governing authority of the word. Being a student of the word is not just about talking it. There is a way you, you submit. Like you submit to a man. You are submitted to the authority of the word. Many of us read the word, but we have not submitted. To submit to the word of God means the word of God becomes the final opinion in your life. No matter what your argument is, when they bring the word of God, it ends every contention. John 5, 7, Jesus speaking. He says, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. Very important. His word must abide in you. Hallelujah. He says, you will bear much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Hallelujah. John 16 verse 13. Let's look at, I'm just giving you these scriptures. John 16 verse 13. Can you look at it very quickly? John 16. God is changing somebody tonight. He said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come. Listen, let me tell you something. Koinonia is called intimacy and partnership. The first thing is intimacy. You must contend for the knowledge of the Holy Spirit. It is in the knowledge of the Holy Spirit that you experience the gifts of the Spirit in your life. You cannot have the gifts of the Spirit and the anointing of the Holy Spirit independent of His presence. When He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into how many? That means there are many truths. He will guide you into all of them. It says, For He shall not speak of Himself, but who whosoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you he will show you hallelujah very important let me show you something jesus said john 14 verse 10 john 14 verse 10 the second prize the second key to an extraordinary anointing i just have four of them john 14 verse 10 Believest thou not that I am in the Father? Now, this was Jesus doing extraordinary works. And these people were dumbfounded. And they wanted the secret of his power. Listen to what he was saying. He says, and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you. He said, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. The Holy Ghost. That source and sustainer that lives in me. He said, he doeth the works. Every time you see a mighty man doing things, he's not the one doing it. There is somebody behind. I was not born like this. I wasn't born this way. That's my sister. My blood sister. I wasn't born this way. It takes a commitment and a determination. Go for revelation. It's too early to start looking for manifestation. You are at the stage of preparation. No matter how great you are, if you can become, no, even if they make you a pastor of a church, don't let titles make you graduate yourself from the school of the spirit. Go and sit down. Pastor Femi is here. He's the senior pastor in Rema. And you come and sit down quietly. There are many people having his position now who start running. You must learn to sit down. Don't allow the applause that men are giving. Don't let it see. Don't let it take you away from the school of the spirit. Hear me tonight. There is more. It's time to eat because the journey is far. The angel told the prophet, he said, eat for the journey is far. He ate a little and he slept. The angel woke him again. He said, eat for the journey is far. And the Bible says he ate and he went in the strength of that bread, a 40 days journey. Number three. You want to see an extraordinary anointing in your life. The price of total obedience. Total obedience. Total obedience. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. For time's sake, we will not read it. Just read 5 to 10. Specifically verse 8. If you can project that verse 8. Shatapala katopara. 
Sense the anointing of the Spirit in this place. Philippians 2 verse 8. The Bible says, I'm being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became what? Obedient even unto death. Can I tell you something? There is a way you can be obedient that it will cost you. Are you listening to me? You must make up your mind whether you want to obey God or you want to obey men. It will cost you. It's called obedient unto death. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2. It says, it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day. That these blessings, uh, you know, I, I, will, I will exalt you, shall be above all nations. And this blessing shall come to you and overtake you. Then it begins to list downwards. Hallelujah. Very important. Matthew 7, the Bible says, He that heareth my words and doeth them. Not he that heareth my word and just dances. No. Obedience, 24 to 25. Matthew 7, 24 to 25. It's like to a wise man that built his house upon the rock. I want to challenge you. Many of you, the reason why God is not working with you is because you don't have a heart to obey God. There are some of you here, the day God asks you to empty your account, you will bind and cast and lose and curse. And even write it as a prayer request. That voice that likes taking what God has given me. Obedience. Obedience. Everybody say obedience. Obedience will cost you. Obedience will cost you. They can give you a ministration somewhere. There are great ministrations that I have been given and the Lord says no. No. I just tell the protocol, no, I'm not going. I don't need to tell lies and say, okay, something, uh -uh. I, I'm not going to go. I remember one time, there was a pastor who invited me and I was praying. At the same time, there was an NCCF meeting in Delta. And for three days, I kept seeing myself there. And I had to call him because I had given him my word. They were so excited, they were preparing. I said, Pastor, I'm sorry to tell you, but the Lord wants me to be, the Lord wants me to be in Delta. The pastor was so sad. In his mind, he say, so because my church is now not as big as a state conference, that's why you are not coming. No, not at all. I paid my transportation. I went there. And at the end of it, when I got there, the Lord told me, you are not collecting an honorarium. When they bring it, bless it and give them back. So it was not just, it was not for money at all. Obedience. Hallelujah. I've shared it. Well, it's, them, it's, not, it's not necessary. It's not something I'll say now. But somebody brought a huge gift for me one time this year. And when he brought it, I just looked at him. And I told him, I said, mm -mm. as he was, he was trying to offer me, I said, no way. Already God had told me no. How many of you can say no when God says no? How many of you can say yes when God says yes? You are afraid of being different. You are afraid of being criticized. You are not ready for an extraordinary anointing. Because one day, God will tell you to declare his counsel. And the fear of what men will say. Let me tell you something. Extraordinarily anointed people are stubborn people. They are men that can defy things. I don't mean rebellious. Mary said, whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. Someone met me one day and said, don't you think meeting once a week is too small for koinonia? I looked at the person I said, back to sender. We don't do things just because we want to do it. No. As you see upon the mount, then you will do. If you do what God did not direct, you will defend it by yourself. Hallelujah. Obedience to the principles of the word. Obedience to the voice of the spirit. Many of us, when we started with God, one of the things that made our spiritual journey well was because we were living by the principles of God. Many of us are waiting for a word from God or a vision or a supernatural experience, but you are not obeying the truth of God's word that you are seeing. You want extraordinary finances. 
You are not tithing. You are not giving. You see somebody coming every week to give tithe. Say, are, are you sure this guy is not pretending it? Are you the only one God is blessing? <laughs> the performance is for obedient people. The performance is not just for hearers. Make up your mind to obey the word. No matter what it will cost you. Hallelujah. The last scripture there, Jeremiah 7.23. Jeremiah 7.23. God is separating people in this place to give them extraordinary anointings. He said, but this thing commanded I them, saying, obey my voice and I will be your God and ye shall be my people. He said, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you that it may be well with you. You want it to be well with you, it will be on the wings of obedience. Hallelujah. Years ago, after we came back from our crusade, it was a powerful time. PFN called us and they said, we want you to come and establish a branch of your ministry. They were ready to give us an auditorium and give us pastors to train. I was excited. I went to the Lord. The Lord just answered me and said, you will die. That was exactly what I repeated to the people. I said, the Lord said, I will die. Yeah. Obedience. It's difficult to obey when you are going to lose a lot. It's easy to obey. When the obedience is on to gaining something immediate. Obedience. I choose to obey the word. I choose to live by its truth. Number four. There are many of you who have done these three. But the fourth key is what you have missed. The price of consistency. The price of consistency. The price of consistency. Look at me. Everybody. How many of you have seen someone cutting a tree? Do you know that if you keep hitting that tree, it looks like nothing is happening. There is one final hit that will cut the tree. That was not the strongest hit. It was the most consistent one. Are you listening to me? Many of us, listen, and let me tell you something. One of the greatest lessons, or yes, one of the greatest lessons that the Lord has taught me in this life is that it pays to wait upon the Lord. Impatience has cheated many people out of the blessings of God in this life. We are in a hurry for everything. Everybody say the price of consistency. Consistently doing the same thing. Regardless of the outcome. Regardless of the outcome. You tight and you don't see the blessing. You say, I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping. I know that God is behind his word. Great people in life are those who have done certain things consistently. Galatians 6 verse 9. Do not be weary in well doing. He said, for we will reap in due season if we faint not. Do not be weary in well doing. He said, and let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap. Everybody say, I will reap. Yeah. Some of you have been coming for koinonia again and again. Six months, things have not changed. Do not be wary. If it is what you are doing well, don't be wary. The Bible says you will reap because you are sowing. The only way the devil can kill your harvest is to stop you from sowing. The Bible says, He that sows unto the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal. In 1 Kings 18 from verse 30 to 46, we will not read it, just write it down. 1 Kings 18 Verse 30 to 46. The Bible says, Elijah prayed seven times. Everybody say seven times. If Elijah stopped at the sixth time, 
it would not work. He had to pray how many times? In fact, the Bible is so graphic. It says he prayed the first time. He sent the servant, go and check. The man said, nothing. Oh. Consistency is what separates ordinary people and extraordinary people. Consistency. Consistency. You pray no matter the outcome. You study the word no matter the outcome. Consistency. Many of us, when we are at the edge, you are at the verge of a breakthrough. That's when many of us give up. Hallelujah. In 2 Kings chapter 5, you read from verse 1 to 4, but let's just focus on verse 4. 2 Kings 5, the Bible says, the prophet had told Naaman, he said, if you want to be clean, go and dip yourself. How many times? Seven times. Naaman was complaining and grumbling. It didn't change him. The Bible says, ah, I thought they were protecting it. Hallelujah. Naaman dipped himself how many times? Don't worry, just do your work, media. Seven times. Do you know what it means to dip yourself? Many of you were baptized. They dip you only once. Imagine a great man. He entered the water. He entered and came out. He asked the slave girl, how many? She said, one. Do it again. He entered, came out. At the fourth time, he was already embarrassed. He was looking like mud. God said seven times, Mr. Man. Consistency. Consistency. There are many of you, you are looking for a prophet to prophesy to you. Nobody comes. God says, just continue doing what you are doing. That's the only prophetic word you need. Keep doing it. Pastor Chris will say what? How, how does he say it? Keep speaking it. Don't stop saying it. Be consistent. Some of you start preparing for an extraordinary life. And impatience will just cancel it out. How, and you know, see, it's dangerous because when you start a journey, you get to a point where you are in the middle. You, it's too far for you to go back and then you can't reach there. Many of us start the journey and you go back. You are traveling to Abuja. You've now gotten to Abuja Kaduna Expressway. And you say, Kai, this journey is too far. I went to Meduguri on, on road. I slept and woke up I don't know how many times. I asked the driver how many more hours. He said six or seven. I said, what? We've been on this journey since. I had to sleep on the road. But did that mean we were missing the way? See, that you have to wait does not mean you made a wrong decision. Continue. John 6 verse 15. I mean Joshua 6 verse 15. The crossing of Jericho. Joshua 6 verse 15. The Bible says on that seventh day, you can imagine, to throw a big wall, God gave them an instruction. They went round once. The people in Jericho were wondering, who are these madmen? They had to die to themselves to know that whatever God tells you to do, it will work. On the seventh day, they now started going one, two, three, four, five. Madness. Six. At the seventh time, they blasted the trumpet. And the Bible tells us, see, the wall of Jericho did not fall down. It sank. Because the Bible says on the wall, five chariots could stand on it. So even if it falls, it will become another wall again. Sank. John 20, verse 11. When I was preparing these notes, I just put all these scriptures and the Holy Spirit told me, no, there's one more. My people must hear. John 20, verse 11. The Bible says when Jesus resurrected, all the disciples came and the one Jesus loved checked the tomb and they saw that Jesus was not there. They checked once and they ran away. But the Bible says Mary Magdalene stayed there. Everybody say consistency. And when she checked again, suddenly she saw an angel. Consistency. Consistency requires patience. It requires uncommon patience. It requires grace. Hallelujah. Many people in ministry, they start 
And then God is telling them, just be consistent. Don't compromise. Don't compromise. Teach your message. It may not be popular, but don't compromise. If, do you know that is impatience and lack of consistency that makes people to derail from the things of God and get into witchcraft? They are looking for fast, fast fame, fast everything. They want a jeep fast. Fast jeep. One of the greatest revelations that God has put in me is the beauty of patience. I can wait. I've killed hurry from my life. I can wait. Some of you are in a hurry for everything. And this is your own becoming. You are in a hurry to, you want digital hearing God now. Let you just say, thank you, Jesus. And God just begins to talk. Five minutes later, he has finished. You say, I give you praise. Unfortunately, his system is not like that. They that wait. Hallelujah. Very important. Consistency. These four things are the things that I practice in my own life every time. And I'm determined not to stop it. This last one is probably new to many people. You are just seeing the power of consistency. Consistency. When you want to build a house, the workers come every day. They put three blocks today. Tomorrow they come again. They add four blocks. I was checking the database of Koinonia. And I found out we are getting close to 5,000. The database, people who have been blessed, who have come to worship. I remember when we started it, 20 people, new people, 40 people, 20 people today, 100 people, 60 people, 400 people, consistency. Everybody say consistency. I play a bit of keyboard. When I started, I was fairly consistent. And then I stopped being consistent. Do I like keyboard? Yes. Am I blessed by it? Yes. Can I play like I can? No. Why? You are not consistent. You see why many people are not consistent in God's presence. That's why they don't know when God speaks a thing. Consistency. Consistency. That's why we have a lot of people who are not stable with spiritual things. You run to this man of God today. Abuja or Lagos or wherever. You say, man of God, my life must change. He said, come and sit down under the word. Two weeks later, I said, man of God, it has not changed though. He said, just continue. He said, oh, let me find one that can give this thing to me sharp, sharp. Many of us have entered into all kinds of things. All kinds of things. Everybody say, I will, I will continue in the things that I've started. Consistency. Let's do a quick review. Number one, the price of consecration. The price of consecration. Number two, the price of revelation. Consecration will kill you. You will take up the agenda of God and forget about your own agenda. There are some of you who finish service. You want to run and go for work. God will say, uh -uh. for you, you are exempted. The normal law is to look for a job. You, you are exempted. You are a lady, you finished. You are just planning. Thank God I will get married. God will say, uh-uh. You are going to marry in the next three years. Give me these three years of your life. Say, back to sender. I've always known. Enemy of progress. Now that is my breakthrough. It's my turn to shine. Consecration. You must die to yourself. You can't do everything. There are many of us, every program, secular or Christian, you are there. Something happens in TJ Palace, you come. You are happy. You just sit down there. Later, I say, Kai, it's time for fellowship. Let me run. And you, you wonder why your ears is as if they put cotton wool inside. You can't hear God. You always hear nonsense. Samuel had the voice of God because he was lying down close to the ark. If you lie down close to the ark, you will hear the voice of God. 
an extraordinary life. I'm saying this today because it will happen by the Spirit. He and I will be an extraordinary ministry. I won't be. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, Jehovah. I have touched the end of myself. Listen, don't be in a hurry in your life. Stop following the plan that people have carved for themselves to define success. You will fall into a ditch you may not recover from. Receive the blueprint. When you see your life becoming strange, it's a sign that there is an uncommon call upon your life. Endure it. It's working for others, but when God gets to you, you will train others and raise them, but you, God, will say, sit down. There is a reason. You are coming to the end of yourself. I remember one man who God instructed and said until he buys 15 cars for people before he buys one for himself. At the end of the third car, the wife told him, see, I'm going to leave you. I've been keeping quiet about this thing. It's paining me. Because people started embarrassing the woman. They say something is wrong with your husband and you are a foolish woman. You won't go and do something about it. 15! That was the instruction God gave him. This guy will walk like an elephant and carry money and buy a car. A Jimmy's mother of blessed memory. Before she went to be with the Lord, she was preparing to buy a nice car for herself. And then the Lord gave her an instruction that she should buy a brand new Toyota Corolla and go and give one of her junior staff. How many people will slap you when you do that kind of thing? Ladies, if your husband comes and says, Honey, come and give me a hug first and a kiss. And you feel, he say, What's, What is it? I can't wait. He said, God has spoken. He said, All right, sit down. Now, we are going to evacuate this house, said the Spirit of God. The house that you built with your own money. They will call you from the village quick. They'll say, Come back home. Before you come home, they are prepared what will recover you from that mindset. They'll say, Just drink this before we start talking. Because you are nowhere. Mad men are the ones who have changed this world. Uncommon people. Uncommon people. Uncommon people. Some of you have to trek long distances to come for Koinonia every week. But you are determined. Consistency. Go for revelation. Stop doing cheap ministry. You will start insulting great people. Don't join that group. Stay with the spirit until you catch a substance of life. When you have a message, I promise you the world will hear you. Forget about money. Chase God, you will find other things. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom. And his righteousness and all other things. A time will come if somebody pays you one million per week, he has insulted you. You hold on. If you can endure, he that endures to the end, not stop at the middle. If you start a race, a marathon, and you're running, assuming you're supposed to go around Zaria, you started from ABU, you're almost coming, and you're at, you at um, energy research, and you collapse there, will they say, hey, yeah, we understand, we saw your effort, we'll be watching you. When they list the names of those who are disqualified, they will put your name there. So the person who just started from here to aviation and stopped, and you, you have now been put in the same class. Everybody say, I'll be consistent. Say, I'll be consistent. Pray in tongues. It's too early to pray and start saying, oh, I'm looking. It's something. Mm -mm. Koinonia is where we are today because we have been consistent. For four years, God trained us. We're coming every night. People were sitting on the floor. Pastor Williams and his wife with the kids sometimes will come all the way from Sabo. Married people, they will come and sleep in the student's hostel. They are looking for something. Tomorrow now, somebody will see him and the wife will say, how are we sure? This woman said she's just chopping, ripping where she didn't sow. Somebody spoke against... Um, Catherine Ma Maria Woodward Eater. She said, The Lord judge you 
the person's tongue became like banana until he wrote an official letter of apology and she slapped it back. Hallelujah. I was told, was it Oedeko or, or Adeboe that somebody saw the things that they were doing and the woman just hissed and trivialized it. Oedeko. That woman was barren for I don't know how many years from the story. One time she went to a prophet searching for solution. The man wanted to pray for her and he said, stop. God is revealing to me that you have offended a great man of God. This is what is responsible. She called the name. The woman packaged a seed. Don't worry. Those who are talking against you will sow into your life for recovery from their madness tomorrow. Just continue. continue. Anytime you see a great man, I was, I was speaking to my sister. You know, she was over at my place and I was talking to them. And I was telling them something. I said, one of the greatest things I've learned in life, listen to me. See, if you try to defend yourself, hear me, you are, God, God doesn't have anything to do again. Are you listening to me? There are many of us, they just, you just pray for five hours, you want to explain to everybody. Ah, ah. Be convinced about this. At every point of your life, those who love you are greater than those who don't. Don't lose touch with those who truly love you and be focusing on a few people. Out of the twelve, it was only Judas who didn't love Jesus, not eleven. Jesus focused on the people who loved him. Some of us want, who loves me? Do you like me? Do you don't like me? Do you don't like me? You say, why now? Let me, let me make you like me extraordinary people are lonely people lonely people until they arrive and then everybody will see Moses was alone they didn't come for visit for him they didn't send any bounty from Egypt they thought he was dead but when God was done with him he became a sign and a wonder are you ready to pray tonight rise up on your feet rise up on your feet we are going to cry to the Lord the Lord is calling you into an extraordinary anointing. Into an extraordinary anointing. We are going to pray for just five minutes. And we'll round up. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Everyone hold your hands together and let's pray in tongues for just one minute. Zembra teka poka sapota kata balada bakati gadaba. There's a realm, a realm of the extraordinary, the realm of champions. That's where world changers dwell. It's a mountain where the eagles dwell, not where the birds are, not where the chickens are. It's a pedestal. It's a plane in the spirit. Rakata prekete pela daba kata prekete pela daba. Rakata prekete poko sopataya. Is the place for mighty men. Is the place for great men. Writers of history, history makers, world shakers, ambassadors indeed. Men whom the earth is not worthy of. Rakata prekete ke pela daba. Come on, pray. Se prosko pote kete le bokotia. Se proske bosh. Se kete ke prosko se ke priada. Ale prosko so preska. Re kete keta. Ke prosko prete keta la mama mama. Re poto prete le mama mama. Prayer point number one. Lord, I refuse an an ordinary life from today. I make a vow and a commitment. I will not be ordinary. Go ahead. Not in business. Not in leadership. Not in my job. Not in ministry. I contend for an extraordinary anointing. I refuse to be average. Not in ministry. An extraordinary healing ministry. An extraordinary deliverance ministry. 
an extraordinary preaching ministry, an extraordinary apostolic ministry, pray, an extraordinary prophetic ministry, extraordinary evangelical ministry, pray, I will be an extraordinary worshiper, an extraordinary worshiper, an extraordinary worshiper, an extraordinary businessman, tell yourself, I am destined to be great. My parents may not know it. Pray. The people in my community may not know it. But I'm determined. I refuse. I refuse the ordinary. I refuse the ordinary. My name will be written in the sands of time that I did terrible things in righteousness. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. You are going to pray all of these four things. Grace to pay the price for consecration. Grace to pay the price for revelation and intimacy. Grace to pay the price for obedience. Grace to be consistent. You know where you have been, where have been faulting. Lift your voice and pray. Grace, oh God. Grace, 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 grace to separate myself from the cares of this world, grace not to entangle myself with the lusts and appetites that hinder the anointing, grace, lift your voice and cry, grace, to live a sanctified life grace to live a life that is set apart grace grace pay the price pay the price lamentations 327 it is good that a young man bear his youth his, his, his yoke in his youth pray for grace lift your voice and pray grace for revelation Grace for revelation. Say, Lord, grace to be a student of the word. I will buy books. I will buy tapes. Day and night. Day and night. I will sit with the word. Day and night. I will sit with the word. Pray for intimacy with the Holy Ghost. Tell yourself, Holy Spirit. I'm tired of pretending like I know you. I want to enter a tangible experience. I want to hear your voice. I want to walk with you. Koinonia. I long for that intimacy. Pray for grace to obey. Lift your voice and pray for grace. Grace to obey. Lord, I've been disobedient. Lift your voice and pray. Grace to obey. No matter what it will cost you, you will be different. They will mock you. They will criticize you. Every great man followed that path. You are not the first. You will not be the last. Enjoy it. Pass through it. Enjoy it. Pass through it. When you become great, your life will explain the process. Pass through it. Make up your mind to obey God. Be uncompromising no matter what it will cost you. Finally, pray for consistency. Consistency. Some of you stop doing the things that brought you to this realm. That's why you've not gone higher. Lift your voice and pray. Consistency. I will stop fasting. I will stop fasting. I will stop praying. No. No. Nothing will make me stop fasting. Nothing will make me stop praying. I will stay with the word. I will read books. I will watch videos. I will spend time in worship. I will build myself. I will develop myself. I will learn from great people who have gone ahead of me. I will give my eyes no sleep until I do the things that will move me forward. No matter the commendations, I will let it get into me. I make up my mind to be consistent 
to be consistent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a secret. This is a secret. There is nothing mysterious about it. An extraordinary anointing. Hallelujah. An extraordinary anointing. This is the secret to an extraordinary anointing. Lift your hands in one minute. I want to pray with you. Sit up and Lift your hands, everybody. I want to pray that grace will come upon you and make you walk in these realms. For many of you, this grace will come upon you in a mighty way. In a mighty way. I want you to carry an anointing that will destroy spiritual laziness. As I count seven, that grace will come. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Take it now. 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 I release it. Receive it. That fire. Go for Shaketa. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Let it come upon you. Grace. Extraordinary ministry. Extraordinary anointing. Take it. Like fire. Holy Ghost. Move in power. Move in power. Outside. Outside. Let the power of God move. Grace. Let the fire burn. Let it ignite you. Take it, 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 take it. Be separated. Let the desire for the ordinary die. Let the desire for the ordinary receive it. It will come upon you like rain, like rain, like rain. Take the photo for an extraordinary anointing for an extraordinary life. Set up, set up, May you command results. May you command results. Results that can be reproduced again. May you see the power of God in your ministry. May you see the power of God in your life. I bless you with a hunger for spiritual things. Hunger that will separate you from faith. Someone may be here. Maybe you are 25 years and your issue came with you from birth. You know, you start counting from when you are born. So technically, it's more than because you start counting from when you are born. But the whole issue can be there. Demonic. Are you willing to allow the devil take advantage of you? Or are you willing to say, no, 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 no. I, 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 this thing called SS. I know that you are there in my body and this and that. But you have to live today. This lack of favor. I carry bad luck everywhere. What is making, I mean, somebody promises to help you. All of a sudden changes his mind as if, he, as if a charm came on him. No. There are many of us who are walking under extreme levels of close heaven. Extreme. You can look at a life and know not one area is working. That's a call for concern. Nothing is working. Father alive, mother alive, six children graduate, no job. The only person employed is a driver. That's not a good testimony, brothers and sisters. 
something is wrong for as long as you say that's how our people are this issue of our people you must throw it away and embrace the word of god from my village where we come from where what do you mean where you come from the bible says he that cometh from above is above all if you come from your village you will look like them if you come from above you must change your identity i come from above in my whole family everybody suffers lives from hand to mouth there are hard do you know that not many poor people there are people who they, their issue is not laziness they are walking under an extremely close heaven when you are walking under an extremely close heaven if you like become the managing director you will still go through a hard life hardship has nothing to do with money or lack of it it's a spirit that makes things laborious for people something that should take two weeks can take 10 years is god challenging us tonight i really want to challenge you there are people who never do anything well the first time they have to do it three or four times before it ever works who says it must be like that regardless of the assistance that is within their disposal it's a terrible spirit a woman gives birth to five or six children five of them are irresponsible people not knowing their left from their right and only the last born now is trying to even know god drinks once in a while and knows god here so he's not even balanced that's not a good life you can change it are we together that this sickness in my body listen i have been sick oh don't think i'm just talking nonsense i have been sick let me tell you i know what it means to be sick hopelessly sick you go to a hospital and at a point you know that this thing is trial and error there's no certainty i know what i'm saying you can walk in divine health it's a realm that is a reality not just divine healing divine health are we together you can walk in the favor of god you don't have to be a millionaire to be favored when god grants you access to helpers and people such that as your need comes there are people to shield you and that's favor that's favor money is not everything there are things i have seen people with money who are helpless in the face of certain things favor you can be a millionaire and not be favored the question is how it came you paid your life you paid everything you paid your faith in god for it you are you are a poor man and you are a failure let me tell you how you know your heavens are opened remember last week's message the degree to which men arise to help you brothers and sisters is a classic sign that god is with you it's not about saying i can do it when a man arises to help you makes it his responsibility to see your life move forward that's favor tonight i trust god that we will receive favor we need it you see how the climate is harsh in this country we need favor have i not said have i not said have i not said but you shall die have i not said but you shall die have i not said but you shall remain poor have i not said but you may remain sick have i not said but you may not move forward in your life but tonight you can make up your mind and say lord you have said it i believe it i act upon that truth and it must manifest it must manifest some of us are here as you're seated right now you are angry with other people angry with god angry with your father let me tell you something about the spirit of grief listen grief is a spirit and bitterness is a spirit i used to think there were very little issues but i have discovered that they play a major role in robbing us from receiving from god are we together if only my father got a good job by now he would have given me one of his houses see how i'm starting life from scratch and you are angry you may never move forward are we together 
see how my head of department annoyed me today and you rob yourself from receiving see how the bike man eh, wanted to take away my change i said there is many 10 naira he refused and because of 10 naira you miss a major miracle part of your preparation tonight will be to take away anything that can stand the way of the free flow of the power of god from hatred to bitterness to envy and all of these things that have that sustain the ability to rob you and destroy you and you open up your heart and say lord you have said it i'm ready to see it manifest in my life are we together it doesn't take so long i was so blessed by the testimony of our dear sister you know i met two people while i traveled i had prayed for them some time ago two of them over the issue of um um barrenness there's been this uncommon grace that i have personally seen in this season for releasing supernatural fruitfulness especially in the area of children strange miracles very strange miracles there are probably people seated here that's all you pray for you can give away your job and give away anything god give me a child do you believe you can do it whether they say you have a womb or not that's just leave the doctor's report there's no doctor that knows everything in the human body even us we are still learning many things we are calling we are changing the names as we grow so there's no guarantee there is no guarantee that what the doctor said is final authority there are people who they've told them you have to live one week and after 10 20 years they are still standing are we together do you know that when you travel to the villages you see people who ordinarily if you diagnose them you just put a drip right immediately but they are the ones walking maybe it's the mechanic the only mechanic in the village fixing truck he will carry it by himself and put it and that person is sick every sign but simply because someone has not told him he believes he's healthy and he will live like that 97 he's still kicking are we together yeah you don't have any child you lose your teeth nobody feeds you so you better keep them your dentition must be complete at 97 you cannot walk you are in trouble nobody will help you and you see people 102 103 but the informations we have received have conditioned us to agree with certain things so they look at you and they say kai you look pale you just say yes i look pale you you know nothing is wrong with you but just because you read online and they say once you see a pimple here and here is a sign of ebola and exactly where they described is where you say no 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 i don't have ebola and after 10 minutes say, let me better go to the hospital they will now say you don't have ebola but you are sick lie down now we have doctors here doctors don't feel bad I'm, I'm on your side but i'm just saying look we need to edit a lot of stories we have received do you know if you were not told certain things you would have gotten more results in your life than now something you had discouraged you something someone told you out of sympathy and a sincere heart you were believing god and you know you just knew that look this thing will work and somebody told you he said look let me tell you something eh you see me i'm 70 years old i started this your madness when i was 19 till now god has not responded i can't say he's not faithful oh, but <laughs> this is your gym gym you will soon rest and immediately your passion dies down the devil is a liar tonight every truth in the word of god is available for the believer die believing it die acting upon it and you will commit god's integrity you're not going to be careless over it and get a result brothers and sisters i would die believing the word of god if i if i die it's over you can talk or you talk to a dead body but not when i'm alive i believe his word i believe i believe Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. I believe. I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. I believe in miracles. I believe in signs and wonders. 
believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, I do believe. I believe in miracles. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe. I believe. Lord, I believe. believe him do you believe him you are here seated do you believe that that devil can leave you there is a spirit that oppresses you you can't sleep i went through it as a preacher oppressed by demon spirit people told me it's, it's not it doesn't happen well it happened to me brothers and sisters it did it happened to me the day i was free i knew till tomorrow do you know let me tell you something brothers and sisters one activity of a demon spirit in your life can work like an octopus close almost 10 doors one spirit 10 doors you will be addressing it here finances favor open door whereas one wicked spirit sitting on your destiny you may say it, it doesn't matter you watch the lives of people let me tell you when most people come out they come out over the most obvious issue the most obvious one is the one you try to address but when the power of god comes it's like a drug it will scan your body and deal with everything it's only because you need a child now that's why you think what is wrong with you is barrenness it's a spirit that has been enjoying your ignorance for a long time it's just that you've not had an opportunity to give birth so you do not know are we together now There are people carrying the spirits of failure upon their lives. They will tell you it's because of this job. They leave this job and go to this one. They leave this and do this. Listen, when you see different conditions producing the same result, there is a spirit behind it. Whether good or bad, you take a man somewhere he excels. You take him somewhere he excels. There is a spirit sponsoring that result. The same way you take a man and give him any opportunity, he will blow it. There is a spirit this is a revelation to someone already to tell you it's not that they didn't give you the job it wouldn't have made any difference it's not about the job you must address the spirit causing failure in your life and family are we together now yeah there are people who do well in every family they rise up they enjoy the blessings of the lord and overnight they crash as if they do you know let me tell you something there are people i know today honestly speaking 10 15 20 years ago these people were like the happening people in every area influence finances today today they will cough and there's nobody to arise and help them it's a spirit you you will now come and think okay it's just because this one didn't go to school no 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 there is a spirit you may write 20 prayer requests and those 20 prayer requests are caused by one just one spirit and the moment the power of god touches you you will start seeing a ripple effect of open doors that's what usually happens all of a sudden somebody who promised to help you after six years now says uh -uh, i told you to send me your number that day no he just thinks he's realizing it but something made him the king could not sleep and he called he said come uh, bring me this mordecai did this so 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 and so did they reward him mordecai had done that he had never offended the king as far as the bible records yet they did not bless him remembrance does not happen through charm there is a spirit that sponsors men to remember you do you know brothers and sisters i have learned through life that the mountain that stands before you is within the capacity of someone to crumble and solve it for you but until the spirit of god moves those people they will never help you don't forget my teaching on the gift of men listen to that teaching again it's a powerful secret 
one of the most there are seven mysteries and secrets that god gave me one of it is the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers overnight your life can change because the right person steps into your life overnight you can die because the wrong person stepped into your life there are some of us what you are receiving tonight is grace for the right people to come there are too many people in your life none of them is right all the trouble in your life can be traced to certain individuals that hop their way through your life no have i not said it's up to you to make the world work right now and we're going to engage the world this night violently violently please drop your pride drop everything and let's cry before the god of heaven and say lord step in step in step in change my story don't pretend like everything is working change my story lord i thank you a and b and c area they are working well i give you the glory but lord this area i've i've come before you tonight trusting you for grace trusting you for grace trusting you for grace he reigns he reigns he is standing by my side to bring his word to pass he reigns he reigns cannot insist listen if you are embarrassed to be desperate about your miracle you do not deserve it please hear me let me repeat myself if you are embarrassed and ashamed to be desperate about your miracle you do not deserve it sir you do not deserve it there must be a desperation you want the anointing you don't you don't pursue it passively and carelessly and casually and hope it to come upon your life no sir no sir you will seek it like a treasure that is missing hallelujah tonight i want us to pray don't don't look faith is not foolishness this is a factory where god produces miracles so you, you you are going to have to trust god get angry over what is not working give thanks for what is working but insist insist let me show you something sit down let me show you something before we pray john 15 if you can give it to us john 15 let's look at something jesus said john 15 let me show you how passionate jesus is in us producing results john 15. we'll read from verse 5. verse 5 down to 8. listen this is what jesus is saying i am the vine who is the vine who is the vine but he says ye are the i've taught again the fruits come from the you are the fruit bearing part of me 
are we together when you come to a tree and you don't find um, um, fruit you don't start insulting the root you look at the branch that's the obvious part now the branch depends on the fine however the branch is the fruit bearing part it displays the beauty and the strength of the root and Jesus says I am the vine the invisible equation the invisible part and then he says you are the branches listen he that abided in me and I in him what will happen please read on the same person will do what bear how much much fruit then he says for without me he can do nothing we're reading to verse 8 he says if a man abide not in me he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned seven if ye abide in me uh -huh, and my words abide in you ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you read verse 8 if you are a Christian one to read hearing I want you to change bear much fruit with produce results ready let's read it now hearing is my father glorified that ye produce results so hold on hold on don't rush so by producing results you testify that everything i said in the word you make men believe me when your life produces result so if 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 your life does not produce result men have a right to doubt me are we together because you are the other part of god remember he's the head and you are the body but this is a mystery you don't see that head but the body is a reflection of the quality of the head i always give an an, an, an analogy with with a jimmy's uh, um, child the daughter every time she comes you see her well dressed happy he takes care of her um he loves her but much more than that for his name's sake are we together if you see the daughter running around no shoes no nothing you look at him and look at his wife and say why are you people irresponsible nobody blames a child for being a child they blame the parents for not being good parents and so god is saying my testament is under pressure on earth and i am depending on the fruits that you produce when you are healed then that word jehovah rapha now becomes proven in the lives of men nobody can no longer say god is not a good god god wants you to produce results you have to understand this it's not something you have to coerce him he wants it for his namesake it is in his interest praise the lord when i hear that anyone who is part of this ministry is doing well in any area i am happy i feel very proud of them i'm very very happy if you're not doing well i'm there for you but if you're doing well i'm proud of you i'm still proud of you even if you are not doing well but you should do well you have to do well are we together yeah hearing is my father glorified give it to us again that you bear much fruit results you know many people say results don't matter it's a joke what else is the is the yardstick if results don't matter what else don't you know that even loving god and knowing god is results right the dear lady shared a testimony of a brother who was drinking and smoking anything available and now all of a sudden the guy is madly in love with god that's transformation that's results if he goes back to his friends and they say can you taste it as usual he say no 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 i'm a changed person it's not the issue of temptation i am changed transformed by a reality are we together when people who have concluded about you and said sam you will never rise and all of a sudden you rise like an edifice and they say everybody from your village does not rise and all of a sudden you rise pastor alpha ah you won't go anywhere oh. listen do you know i love the way god is he will allow your enemies to finish talking then he'll say let's start proving them wrong one by one by one by one that's what god is doing to someone who has carried his big mouth to talk against your god in this year of triumph god will surprise them do you know listen there are people who scorn at believers happily 
every time they see people loving God, they sit down and discuss them. And to a point that some of you are embarrassed, your phone rings, it's a Christian ringtone, you, you, you off it quickly because you, you don't want to shame this God who is disappointing you. My God, the Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like what? Damn. It will be like a dream. He will say, no, 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 no. Which promise? Which promise are you talking about? They said the one you know. He said, no, no, you are, you are joking. Because people stratify us and keep us at a level and don't want us to rise so that their prophecy will be self-fulfilling. But then when the God of heaven is ready to pick people up, you know, I was blessed by the testimony of a gentleman. I don't know if he's here, the guy in Kogi that got a job. What a blessed testimony. All of a sudden, God just changed his story. Look at the lady that God healed of HIV. I know some of you think it's a lie. This is what we are trying to destroy because if how else do you want to even carry the healing anointing? If you are still calculating the physics behind the healing of whatever, how did A and B become C? You are not a Christian because the Bible said, my sheep hear my voice. The voice of another, they will not hear. This is what makes people to carry news all around thinking every man of god is faking miracles because according to their understanding issue they will not directly come and say we don't believe it but the miracle will happen right before their eyes and they say no 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 it, let's let's verify when the devil afflicts you you don't verify it at once you believe it people come and say satan spoke to me he said go and kill yourself why didn't you call us for verification but when god speaks now people you know it just tells you the mindset of people how much people do not believe god please tonight be a believer be a believer don't just stand up don't just lift up hands to receive as though um let's see if god will no god will change your story and beat you beyond your imagination hallelujah one of the things God told me will happen tonight is a dramatic outpouring of the mantle of favor. I've been praying. Do you know, listen, do you know, I don't share too much of my personal experiences, but I prayed for one year for the ministry of the gift of men. One year, one year. Lord, send strategic people to my life. Koinonia is blessed to have men look we are going to pray for the gift of men you hear me say this thing all the time if a man does not show up in your life you are in trouble you are in trouble or if the wrong person shows up it's still the same thing as as breakthrough not coming because it will not move your life forward one man showing up in your life can say david Dam, come i i just feel like blessing you you sang a song and i had and i want to bless you what does it take to produce your album Oh, sir, to produce one song in Lagos is 250,000. He said, Okay, how many tracks do you have? 10. And then you are there thinking the man is like you and he's listening to you. When you finish, he now says, This is a check of 4 million naira. Please, when you do everything, let me know. And then you leave the man and say, So what is the catch? He said, There is no catch. When it is favor, there is no catch. God will just surprise you and leave you like that. Somebody will just build a house. It's called prepared blessings. See, if you don't believe in what I'm telling you, you can go home, honestly, because this is what we are going to deal with tonight. Triumph. Thanks be to God who causes us always, always, always to triumph. Always to triumph. That you come for koinonia empty-handed and as soon as the service is over, someone walks to you and says, I don't know you, but God sent me into your life. To say from now till September, every month I should be giving you 20,000. You don't believe it can happen? I hear you are five in your family and your dad is dead, your mom is dead. From today, I become a father in this family. Simple. For starters, move out of this place into a two bedroom flat. Look, let me tell you something. It's called quantum leap. I'm trusting that God will take us into this dimension. David, you will do a little experiment. Eh? You will take three steps and then you will jump forward like a frog. Ready? Now, watch. Let me show you the difference between progress and a quantum leap. Are you ready? 
this is progress two three now jump this is a quantum leap i know it's a little analogy but see if you if there is no provision like this your lifetime is too small for you to be successful at the rate humans move you will never build a house till you die at the rate your salary is being paid you will never do anything useful at the rate church services are held you will never know god with the amount of the sermons you need a quantum leap i have witnessed it in my life many people here are witnesses of it where god will just all of a sudden change somebody's story i tell you i feel the anointing as i'm saying this this is what many of us need tonight a quantum leap this issue of moving here and there okay thank god you are now employed you are earning forty thousand. let's be sincere let's be sincere in the name of jesus christ who died and rose again in how many years will forty thousand build a house for you now i know many people say it does not matter it matters to any responsible person how much does it take to marry forty thousand the auditorium is how much how much does it take to a child's school fees a child's school fees right now a child who cannot talk the school fees is hundred hundred and something thousand to just teach them how to play and you plan to have five you better listen to what i'm telling you this is why people are, are depressed depressed someone is driving and talking to himself till he dies till he dies because of depression we need a quantum leap Where the grace of God comes upon your life, divine acceleration, triumph, triumph, shaka pataya, triumph by the Spirit. There are ministries that need quantum leaps. If all you do is to invite members through posters, let me tell you the truth get set for empty pews. Please help those under the anointing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? if all you want to do in life is to move like men men i'm ready more than ever let me tell you it's like a flight i've been having an interesting experience with the holy spirit in the last two three weeks my goodness is is a is is a preparation for a quantum leap this man you see has gone no I'm, I'm i'm only saying you better believe god and arise don't let anybody tell you don't listen to him run away from them they won't help you when you are in trouble you will be surprised to see how the vicissitudes of life will distract you. All these problems we are solving is to give us space to pursue our assignment. Not to build a house for building's sake. Not to buy a car for buying a car's sake. Not to eat well for whatever it is. So that if you decide to lock yourself in your house to worship God for 24 hours, nobody will call you and say, why are you worshiping God? You can't be in church and someone calls you and says you better come and on the machine on which machine you move mountains you cause walls to fall and with your power you perform miracles there is nothing that's impossible and we're standing here only because for you move mountains you cause walls to fall and with your power you perform miracles there is nothing that's impossible that we stand in here only because you can listen Brothers, let me talk to you. Do you know right now? Please come. When you see a gentleman like this, do you know if this gentleman is successful, many elders will ask him, what are you doing? In other words, how come your life is this fast? Society has made people's growth rate so slow. If you buy a car at 45, they say, wow, wonderful. You are responsible. But you buy a car at 22 and see people say you're a witch. If they see a young man succeed, you see everybody saying, uh-uh, at this life, two plus two, it doesn't add up. 
God wants to accelerate the kingdom. The coming of Jesus is near. There is a lot we must do for the kingdom. Listen, you can't spend your life looking for money. It's a cost. It's a cost. It's a cost to spend your life looking for what to eat and what to drink. You will never serve God that way. Pray eight hours. When you are hungry, you are joking. You may endure, but your children will not endure. listen hold on please i want you to pay attention to what i'm telling you you see me preaching from my heart otherwise we'll keep playing games and at the end many christians will backslide pastor jakes they will leave god how many believers do you know who are not standing again because the reality of life we said this thing many years people insulted us and said we're noisemakers those people today some of them are not born again they are not even in Christ again. They've gotten into all kinds of things. Survival is a cause. You should resolve that issue and spend your life serving God. If you are a brother here, when I say pray, please pray. Pray. The sisters can join, but brothers, you must pray. You shouldn't stand and just be, leave any man of God thing and cry. Listen, there are some of you as you are listening to me right now. There are seven siblings or six who are waiting for you to take care of them you have your own mother you have your own father and I, how are you going to live that's the cause of depression and then god calls you into ministry no job you want to marry you want to move forward you, you must be a joker you must access another mystery brothers and sisters you must trust god for a quantum leap tonight there is a grace there is a grace the name is a grace there is an unction that helps men and expedites their process in life the climate is too harsh for an average young man the probability for establishment is is almost like passing through the eye of a needle the factors are too many and we're standing here only because and we're standing here only because you made a way, made a way. When our backs were against the wall, and it looked as if it was over, you made a way. hallelujah there are people here listen home and abroad their entire families are earning 200,000 but every week they are doing physiotherapy and chemotherapy for someone I heard of a woman 70,000 naira every week God is my witness they spend on is it physiotherapy or chemotherapy or something like that and there is no guarantee the person you see how the devil works until all your money finishes then the person will now die peacefully and leave you with trouble how many of you right now nobody to help you in your life lift your voice in one minute and cry cry for the help of God Koinonia, pray, pray. Shabakato sebara balaba. Zakata paroko to sepreketi. Shekete pereko sopra na balaba balaba. Don't know how, but you did it. Lord, I cry. Hear me, O oh God. My life must make progress. My life must make progress. Outside, are you praying? My life must make progress. My life must make progress. Take it, 
Hallelujah. 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 Prayer point number two. Listen. Listen. I want us to break out of cycles tonight. Are we together? I'm going to minister to you, God. There are people here. You are seeing the patterns of your families reproducing themselves in your life. Nobody rises beyond the level. Go to school or not. It's a pattern you must break. Don't watch it happen and say it's all right. Nothing solves itself by itself. You must engage it with faith. Lord, this poverty thing, I've seen it in my family. We are not lazy people, but I'm seeing it come. This lack of being serious with God, lift your voice and break every cycle. Lift your voice and command, exempt yourself. Exempt yourself. Accept yourself. Are you praying? Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. There are people you see who never last in marriage three years no matter what happens maximum three years one nonsense must happen and scatter the marriage are we together there are some of you listen the mysteries that destroy your family is men keep cheating you whether in business whether anytime there is wickedness you are the only one it happens to it's not a coincidence when they want to scam someone you are the first they find when accident is about to happen is when you are crossing the road the car will hit your leg i'd like you to pray and say no more i insist i've been keeping quiet about this but tonight i place a demand lift your voice no more no more no more it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder the yoke from off your neck and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing hallelujah hallelujah two more prayer points before i begin to minister to us listen hallelujah jesus said satan come to me and does not find anything of himself if satan finds what belongs to him in you he's authorized to destroy you we are going to pray and we are going to say lord whatever legal access the devil has over my life and destiny i apply the blood i invoke the mystery of the blood lift your voice and pray legal access i apply the blood are you praying I apply the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. I apply the blood. I apply the blood. I apply the blood. I apply the blood on my children. I apply the blood. Pray on my husband, on my wife, on my business, on my ministry, on my job. I apply the blood. No divination, no witchcraft, no enchantment arising against my life shall prevail. Hallelujah. Please keep standing.
standing. Keep standing, everyone. We are going to pray now. I tell you, I'm angry in my spirit. Luke 18, verse 1. Please, quickly. Luke 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable. Luke 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. Verse 2. There's something I'm looking for. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God neither regarded man. Verse 3. And there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying, avenge me of my adversary. Stop there. God is a God of vengeance. Listen, listen. I know that's the nasty side of God but the God I serve is not only merciful God is, there are people who don't need mercy they need vengeance you don't pray if you don't believe it but let me tell you something there is a God of vengeance he said let God arise and let all his enemies be scattered lift your voice and cry Lord avenge I cry for your vengeance over the works of darkness in my life my family koinonia pray arise righteousness and justice at the foundations of his throne oh god of vengeance arise oh god of vengeance arise against the wicked oh god of vengeance arise oh god of vengeance arise against evil doers arise against them that seek to feed on the flesh of your people hallelujah listen there was a man in the book of Esther called Haman have you heard about Haman that man was conspiring to destroy the agenda of God not just the Jews the agenda of God the apple of his eyes and then the Bible says through a lot of activities when that plot was gotten the king sent and he said they should go and hang him he already built a gallow in advance in advance we live in a wicked world brothers and sisters let me tell you it's not all about vengeance but there is a dimension of it that is necessary if you must break through the wickedness of men is beyond imagination you are going to pray it again lord there are powers that have tied down my life and my family arise oh god of vengeance arise oh god of vengeance arise oh god of vengeance hallelujah hallelujah listen listen i was told the story of a woman pastor jakes married a man that god had blessed and then the man died as soon as the man died strangers came from left right and center and told her you have no inheritance in this they stripped that woman to the last of everything banished her and her children to go men they will smile at you and talk against you in the secret and hope for tragedy to come upon your life so that they will rejoice in your pain no you rejoice in my pain the god of vengeance will arise for you i tell you only a wicked man will see someone in pain and rejoice over it he said rejoice not over me my enemies though i fall yet i will rise again how many of our parents were betrayed by their best friends they lost their job because of someone they knew was the person who signed the check sign them off say destroy them the bible says a man's enemies listen 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 koinonia 
I know many of us are young people but let me tell you when you become a leader or when you become one who is in any position of responsibility you will appreciate this prayer there are men who will kill you and bury you smiling they will kill you and bury you smiling when Judas came to kiss Jesus a kiss is a sign of love correct yet a man used that sign of love as a symbol to an enemy this is the guy this is how you will kill him how many people kissed you into your suffering today they kissed you with a stupid advice and that's that's what has landed your life today they told you stop tightening. these men of god are crooks they have destroyed your life Are we together tonight i want us to engage the word to engage the word with your spirit if you insist brothers and sisters god will give you a breakthrough if you insist god will give you a breakthrough are we together now i want you to pray one last prayer and then i'll begin to minister by the spirit lord visit the root cause of my challenges I may not know what it is i only know the effect oh god go to the root he says every tree the axe is placed at the root every tree my father has not planted lord go to the root cause of the barrenness in my life the root cause as to why finances cannot stay in my hands the root cause are you praying shabakata labosuma rekete koto shobre gere balala 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 hallelujah hallelujah listen if after tonight's meeting you return with a testimony nobody will ask you to run to the house of God you will go by yourself do you know how many why many people never see God the truth is they are tired of lack of results they are tired of it jumping around doing all kinds of things yes you don't love God just for results but you've heard me say it again at a point in your Christian experience results must come as consolations to your serving God visit us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus visit us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus visit us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus visit us tonight let me make an altar call let's start with the altar call first so that we'll finish right now please everyone standing no moving around outside your attention there are people right here everything we boast of is in christ if you are not in christ there is no guarantee please listen very carefully if you are not in christ there is no guarantee whatsoever are we together now so you are here we are talking about witchcraft you have joined us to pray congratulations but nothing will happen to you until there is a translation because when a man is not in christ the bible says he's in the kingdom of darkness the very domain of darkness are we together now so when that prayer of salvation is offered in faith there is a spiritual transfer it is only on that basis you can challenge darkness there are two categories of people very quickly i'm going to make the altar call quickly when you come pastor jakes will lead you in prayer and then we'll take over and fly tonight and trust god to take us to a realm where we will never return never return to this level in the name of jesus you are here and you are saying man of god is as if you are just prophesying to me you are right it's you i'm speaking to and i'm going to make an altar call one maybe two three minutes wherever you are outside i know there are lots of people you are saying man of god can god forgive me yes he can 
can God give me a new beginning? Absolutely. No one has made it in my family. You will be the first. If and only you receive him. He says, as many as believed in him, even to them that, I mean, as many as received him, even to them that believed in him, he gave them power to become. Power to become. You do not have the power, but you have the will. And you can choose. Right now, I'm going to make an altar call. Whether you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time, or you want to rededicate your life. Man of God, I gave my life to Christ, but somehow things have gone haywire. No problem. You are welcome. If you are outside, run like there's fire on the mountain. Any of the overflows, you are inside here. You run out. I will count one to five very quickly. One. Run like there's fire on the mountain. If you are thinking about it, go back to your seat. Give Jesus praise. Please clear the way for them. There are people running outside. Let Jesus Christ step into your destiny. Koinonia, can you motivate them? Appreciate them as they come. Don't let any friend tell you why you're disgracing yourself. Shame the devil over your life tonight. God bless you. Keep coming. Man of God, you don't know what I've done. Just make that step of faith and come. Quickly. Run to Jesus. Run to Jesus. Keep coming. Keep coming. There are still more people. There are still more people. If you came with a friend and he's trying to stop you, leave him alone and come. Run to Jesus. Every one of us in front, can you just lift up your hands? Lifting up your hands is a sign of surrender. Are you following? Please just lift up your hands and pray this prayer sincerely from your heart. Jesus loves you. I want you to understand that. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus. Say it out loud. I want to hear you speak. Say, Dear Lord Jesus. I come before you. I ask for forgiveness for my sins. I believe in the power of your blood. I believe in the power of your salvation. Forgive me of for all my sins. Thank you for new life. Thank you for newness in Christ Jesus. From today, I'm a child of God. I'm born again. My spirit is new. My heart is new before God. In the name of Jesus. Still lift up your hands while I quickly pray for you. Father, thank you for these precious ones. Thank you for the power of your blood. My Father, I ask even as your hands are lifted up, let your love, Lord, descend upon them. I ask that, Lord, the love of God will permit, the love of Christ will be shared abroad in their hearts by the Holy Ghost. Thank you for their lives, God. Thank you for writing their names in the Lamb's Book of Life. We give you praise. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that indwells them now. Thank you for the Holy Spirit helping them to walk in your ways, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for your glory upon them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Please just look at me. Just the moment you turn, just in between the aisle, just you'll see somebody waving behind you. Please just follow him. We'd like to get your name, okay? Your name and some of your contact to get to pray with you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Precious saints, can we celebrate Jesus for this? Can we put our hands together and celebrate Jesus? Celebrate them. Congratulations. Congratulations. God bless you. Please. Let's attend to them quickly so that they can come. We're about to pray now. Hallelujah. We're about to pray. Before we pray, let me talk to two people. There's one inside, one outside that God is visiting their family. There's a mighty anointing that will come on them. One sister, a sister or so, someone inside and someone in the overflow outside. The power of God is going to come on that person now. God is bringing a strange deliverance. I'm seeing a strange deliverance. Bring the person one inside, one outside. I just want to speak to them. Please quickly. We have a lot to do tonight and we want to conserve time. Jesus. 
Lift your hands. I want to pray. Just bring the people. Father, end witchcraft now in her life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that the reign of darkness is over. Bring this lady for me. Free now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Free. I'm going to pray for you. There will be a mighty deliverance right now. Listen, what is deliverance? Deliverance is not crying and rolling on the floor. Deliverance is by the power of God separating you from the spirits and the influences that are responsible for the challenges in your life. I'm going to pray for you. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. I'm already seen in the spirit. Mighty. Especially today, God is visiting visitors. If you are here for the first time, God is visiting visit us in a very strange way. Lift your hands. Don't say anything. Just lift your hands. Just keep your hands lifted. Please bring them. Just keep your hands lifted. Keep your hands lifted. God is touching people. It's a foolish instruction, but it's what the Lord is telling me. Just keep your hands lifted. Like fire. It's coming on people inside and outside. Bring them out. God is visiting visitors. 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 Doesn't mean other people are not being touched. But particularly visitors. Father, spare not your hand. Spare not your hand. Spare not your hand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me pray now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying. There are men and women here right now under strange influences that has tied their lives, their destinies, in the name that is above all names whoever under the sound of my voice inside and outside if there is any spirit motivating the tragedies in your life as we shout that name jesus there will be an eruption of fire in this place and all of a sudden god will begin ministering to people are you ready now at the count of three one two they must go from their hiding place. They must depart from their hiding place. They must depart from their hiding place. At the sound of his voice, I command every spirit, I command every devil, strange spirits tying down the destinies of men. I command you right now. There is mighty deliverance happening in the overflows outside. Mighty deliverance happening in the overflows outside. The power of witchcraft being broken. Being broken. Being broken. God is addressing issues of oppression. Oppression. Shakataya. It must end now. It must come to an end now. It must come to an end now. Lift your hands. 
Hallelujah. I'm seeing a handwriting and I'm seeing setback and then slash delay. That's what God wants to deal with right now. God wants to deal with it. You don't need to know whether you belong to the category. The fire of God will locate you right now. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost, anyone under the sound of my voice, shakata bakata, under the yoke of setbacks, whether you are a visitor, whether you've been here for a long time, in the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to leave you now. I command that spirit to leave you now. The power of God is touching people. Delay, 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 delay. You are a strange spirit. I curse you by the God of heaven. Delay in destiny. Delay in achievement. That spirit, I cost that spirit. I cost that spirit. Bring the mommy out. There's a mighty deliverance happening to her. Delay over your family. Broken, 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 broken by the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is giving me a strange instruction. Please, sisters, lay your hands on your womb. Lay your hands on your stomach. Something remarkable is going to happen here right now. There is a kind of deliverance God is doing. I don't know what I'm even doing. But Lord, I pray right now. This is not for everybody. But I am seeing the Lord is instructing that they lay their hands. And I'm going to pray a prayer for you. You'll be surprised. Every stranger hiding in any sister's body that is responsible for the manipulation of their destinies in the name of Jesus by this prophetic instruction at the count of three release them now one two three release them now 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 Johnson Johnson I'm hearing a name Johnson 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 we are still praying please Johnson my God I tell you I see this fire falling on sisters I don't know what it is with ladies God is God is ministering a serious deliverance to ladies serious deliverance to ladies hallelujah hallelujah you are here in this place listen you never rise beyond a certain level it's not that you don't start please listen carefully i'm speaking by the spirit the moment is like there is a spiritual embargo you get to that height you must crash down wherever you are i'm prophesying now and i'm praying for you the power of god is looking for those people the power of god is looking for those people you rise to a level and fall 
you rise to a level and fall lord in the name of jesus inside and outside wherever you are i release that fire like a messenger to your life like a messenger to your life i cause that witchcraft now i cause that witchcraft now hallelujah the lord is showing me a vision my god hold on i'm seeing deliverance for children like little children the power of god is coming on small children in this place i'm seeing children being delivered some initiated into occultism some initiated into this let's just walk the way god is father in the name of jesus i speak to every little child in this place who is a victim of any satanic manipulation wherever they are don't be surprised if you see little children manifesting now wherever they are inside and outside i'm prophesying that the spirits symbols just the symbols please. right now wherever the children are i'm prophesying that the power of god will touch them touch them i set them free from activities of witchcraft occultism any kind of initiation if there is any little child here under any yoke of bondage i set them free now i set them free now hallelujah hallelujah my friend lift your hands that gentleman going tap him Hi. there is hardship in your family and the lord is asking me to cause it right now in the name of jesus i cause hardship let the anointing of the spirit come on you now i cause that spirit the spirit of hardship i cause you now i cause you now i cause you now in the name of jesus christ hallelujah listen if you are here and you have any blood disease just blood disease any kind any kind blood related issue lay your hand on your chest i want to pray for you right now blood related issue genotype whatever it is um, or any kind of thing maybe any sickness that is blood related please i want to pray for you right now the lord is giving me that instruction very quickly i want to pray for you i'm seeing a lady who is as god is about to change her genotype now 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 a dramatic change of genotype from as to ss from as to aa by the spirit by the spirit by the spirit hallelujah hallelujah please if you come from a family where no one in your family is working lift your hands nobody no job nobody just please just do what i'm asking you to do let's save time just lift your hands nobody at all is working no matter what happens just lift your hands i want to pray for you lift your hands i want to pray for you jesus 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 i'm i'm looking at hands lifted and and for some of the hands i'm seeing like a rope this is not necessarily you this is a representation of your family and i want to pray for you in the name of jesus i stretch my hands get ready for the power of god right now wherever you are even those who didn't lift their hands i decree and declare that that yoke of joblessness comes under attack right now right now right now right now right now i release them i release them i release their jobs 
I release their jobs by the power of the Holy Ghost 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 we end joblessness here right now right now in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah the spirit of revelation is coming on 17 people one seven one seven one seven at the count of four this is the instruction God gives me unusual access to illumination Lord where are they inside and outside one two three strange illumination four take it now take it now the spirit of revelation on common access to the secrets of the kingdom on common access 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 i release it in the spirit access 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 hallelujah please make sure you receive every word that is coming every word come god is going to use you come come and stand here lift your hands stand up in the name of jesus i don't know you huh but an anointing will come upon your life today and god is going to change your life like day and night receive that grace right now strange grace step into that dimension that dimension there are impartations going on now let's just receive the impartations impartations not healings not healings impartations impartations i release the gifts of the spirit right now right now i release the gifts of the spirit lord stir up the fountain stir up the waters stir up the waters i release the gifts of the spirit strange gifts strange gifts strange manifestations of power of power healing anointings healing anointings i activate healing anointings right now healing anointing step into it step into it outside inside step into it god is releasing mantles mantles of healing ancient mantles of healing ancient mantles grace for barrenness grace for barrenness grace for barrenness healing barren cases hallelujah hold on i'm still praying i'm still praying god wants to release the healing anointing let's just stay here with this healing thing god wants to release there are many more people i'm not seeing them receive it yet father you want to release this grace there is such a grace as the healing anointing i pray for you right now in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands inside and outside like a tornado. May the power of God come on you now. Everyone, everyone, everywhere, men, women, take it, take it, take it, fire upon your spirit. Hello, Thy kingdom come. I will be done. Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come. Elohim Adonai, Elohim Adonai, Hallelujah. Now, I don't know how we are going to manage this now. Ushers, there is a prophecy for you. The Lord says, I should tell you from now, as you hold people and as you shake them, there will be a transference on every one usher. I'm prophesying now. That's why I say, I don't know what we'll do. Ushers, ushers, receive that mantle. Receive that mantle. A strange healing grace coming on our ushers supernatural 
supernatural the unction take it take it where you are let that fire come upon you upon ushers in a strange way upon ushers in a strange way the grace for the miraculous no longer will you just hold people no longer will you just welcome people as you clean the seats you release strange mantles hallelujah we'll soon pray for the sick but please everyone lift your hands lift your hands i want to pray i'm seeing people here the anointing for business and entrepreneurship just keep your hands that's why please keep your hands i want to pray for you don't say i'm not calling to a businessman that's none of your business just listen to what i'm saying i want to pray for you is a grace is a grace i believe maybe in the course of the service we'll call a jimmy here to just prophesy that grace and release it truly truly upon your life lift your hands brothers and sisters there is a grace for the marketplace you don't go there through desire it's not that you are a, mon a money monger you just go but strange ideas strange insight do you know i'm seeing a number four and one 41 this will affect many people inside and outside whether you're a businessman or not it's not what i'm asking you that grace will locate you where you are a grace for the marketplace lord in the name of jesus inside and outside all the overflows online anyone here who must step into that grace whether you know anything about the marketplace or not take that grace now take that grace now i release it supernatural access 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 to business strategies access to ideas take it right now receive it receive it it's coming on people receive it receive it receive it is coming on you so that you will go and prosper 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 there is a woman one of our mothers this grace that i'm talking about is coming on you now now one of our mothers one of our mothers is receiving that grace god is releasing that grace whether you are inside or outside whoever it is i release that grace now there is a woman i'm seeing in the spirit you must take that grace now you must take that grace now uncommon ability uncommon ability uncommon insight for the works of your hands to begin to produce fruits hallelujah hallelujah listen look at me please help them how many of you are trusting god to restore something that has left your life it can be anything how many of you are trusting god i want to release that grace now and i want you to believe it some of you had destiny help us but something happened and they left your life some of you had quality relationships but it left your life some of you had finances but it left your life some of you even had certain levels of graces the lord is asking me to prophesy restoration Hi. this is going to land on people's head i'm seeing this thing there are physical gifts you used to see in your life not gifts of the spirit not just gifts of the spirit gifts gifts endowments for some reason it disappeared some of you are actually worshippers singers but that grace left is coming back is coming back i invoke the grace that he has put upon my life i prophesy strange restoration 
I call it by name and I command it back to your life. I call it by name. Everything you once were that you now are not, I command you to become it now. I command you to become it now. I release that grace. I release that grace. Receive it. I release that grace. I release that grace. Hallelujah. Now listen. Listen. There are some of us, hear me. You have been doing certain things. But the anointing for what you are doing has not yet come on your life. This is a very serious prayer. I want to pray for you. You have been doing business with the brain of a money monger. But not the grace for the marketplace. You have been singing only with the voice of a musician but not the spirit of David. I want to release the anointing of your office. The anointing that has to do with your function. Please, I want you to believe what I'm praying. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. It's one thing David was anointed to step into his office. Are you anointed for what you are doing? I know you are working. You want promotion. Is there an unction you are working with? Or are you just working with certificate? At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. There will be distribution of graces. It's like an alignment. The anointing, the oil of your call, the oil of what you are doing is about to locate you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now, whoever is functioning without an anointing, functioning without the oil, I stand upon this ground and I prophesy at the count of three may the grace that will distinguish you come upon you get ready now one one two two three receive that grace now take it take it grace grace for your academics grace for the ministry, grace. The words you speak turns things around. Help me. The chains are gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please. I'm seeing something happening here right now. There are people who are receiving grace for speed. And they will start running physically. Hold them. Hold them so they don't injure people. I release the grace. You won't control yourself. Physically. Running. Speed. Physically. I release that grace now. Receive grace for speed. Receive grace for speed. Right now, right now, I command you to run, run in the spirit, catch up, catch up, catch up by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I release speed, I release speed, I release speed, speed to your life, speed to your destiny, speed to your life, speed to your destiny. Your life, speak to your destiny. The words you speak, the things around your arms. Run like Elijah. Run like Elijah. You took away the chain. Yeah. 
show me so much mercy. Much more than I desire. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray for the sick now. Listen. Please. Three things. Let me just give three instructions. Hold on please everyone. The worship team will continue right now. Now, we are going to be very fast about this, number one. Number two, please, if you have not written your prayer request or the ones of your loved ones, please, I permit you, put on your phone and call them. Tell them to send it as a text message. Write it. We are going to be praying here tonight. And we are going to be asking the fire of God to fall on request. Don't assume if you have not written it. No problem. Settle down. Think well and write you are here you are trusting god for healing i understand there are a few sick people that they brought around please we are going to do it this way if your case is very sensitive then you can bring them to the front here but those outside please just walk to the um well there are a lot more people outside really well for those who can come in let's see but for those who may not make it you can walk to the front and then down there i'm here pastor jakes is here um, we'll just station ourselves one one and then the other people will just support so that we can do it very fast praise God thank God Pastor Jakes is here and Jimmy is here hallelujah praise God hold on so outside you can just walk at your various projector stands and stand there for those who have come in just allow them don't stop them let them come in that does not mean everybody will stream in please are we together if you're standing just stand trust god if they don't ask you what is wrong with you don't worry they just lay hands on you praise the lord Ejimi, please you help us Ejimi will be outside here and pastor jakes will be down outside there praise the lord benga you go with pastor jakes you will help pastor jakes outside um pastor alpha you'll be outside just help them and then um who, who is around again is Femi around? Okay, so you can just come and help me here. So let's do it that way very fast. Very, very fast. If there are more people, there are still promises here. Michael is here. So maybe you can add one. Okay, promise, just follow. Promise, follow Pastor Jakes. Michael, follow Ejimi. Please. Let's do it very, very fast. While, hold on, please. Don't be distracted. Don't cut the flow. We are going to be very fast at this and we'll pray and then I'll speak over your life. Many miracles are happening even whilst you are seated. Don't be distracted. I expect you to be writing your request and be praying in the spirit. Hallelujah. For those stationed at different points, whether at the back, any of the overflows, I'd like you to believe God for a miracle right now. Believe God for a miracle. You can see someone like our daddy. He has come with his crutch, believing God to walk. You believe you walk, sir. You believe the Lord will heal you. So get ready to walk. You see, there are people stationed around. We are going to pray. This will be very, very fast. And then the Lord will help us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Let me start with our daddy first. How long have you been like this, sir? Six months. Stroke? Who brought him? Who came with our daddy? You came by yourself, sir? came by myself. By yourself? From where, sir? First station here. You cannot walk. I can move with, with this walking stick. Which but of the legs has a problem? This is the leg. This is stroke. Yes. Can you lift it? No, I can't. I can't. The hand, I can't lift Hold it. on. Look at this, sir. Look at me. You believe in Jesus? I believe. You believe in the power of I Jesus? Believe. Lord, I introduce your kingdom to this man's life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Huh? The Lord will begin to touch you. Your hands, everything is already dead. Sir, lift your leg. Lift your leg. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Lift your leg. Lift it. Lift your leg. Lift your leg. Start, try to walk gently. Come. Come. Try to walk gently. Come. Give me the stick. Look at me. Look at your stick. Come. Don't be afraid, come. Lift your leg. Look at this. Look at what is happening to this man. Came with this stick. Look at this. 
Nunca disse, nunca disse, nunca disse, nunca disse. chair and just keep him let him sit down while the power of God touches him sir you came here by yourself um trust him okay and the boy has gone okay he's somewhere in the name of Jesus Christ the God you believe has begun this miracle you will perfect it look for a stick for him there hold your stick by yourself and go don't put it on the ground hold it up walk by yourself and go give Jesus praise look at what God is Heal now in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is destroying witchcraft in your life in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Someone is still sick here. Someone is still sick here. I'm feeling the healing anointing pulling out from me. Someone is still sick here. No, 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 no. I'll pray for you. But I'm saying, I feel it within this vicinity from ministers roll down, choir. Someone is sick. Come, let me pray for you. you came out. Lift your hands. Jesus. Someone is still sick here. Someone has to be healed here now. Someone is sick here. I know when the anointing has released me to do something else. I still feel that someone is sick. Someone is sick. Someone is still sick. Lord, let that person be healed. This is a miracle service. This is a miracle service. This is a miracle service. Just this vicinity. I sense it's like, you know how someone is pulling your cloth? Jesus said, virtue has gone out of me. That's what I'm still feeling. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There's a gentleman here. Your elder brother has a case. I may not be able to mention the case. This is a health-related case. But this is a challenge with married people. This has affected, it's one of the worst things that can happen to a man in marriage. And the Lord is bringing a miracle right now. Right now. Elder brother, supernatural miracle is coming to that person by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hi. You are holding her, but something is leaving her to you now you who is holding her something is leaving her to you there is there is virtue i see a transference of grace from a jimmy's wife to you you are doing your work as an usher but you have received something very strange and very powerful you see let me tell you something if if you do not you see hold on walking in the anointing is more than having it having the anointing is very different from being able to navigate the pathways of the anointing if not you will be anointed but you will not be able to dispense it fruitfully because you are just guessing it's like a man shooting anyhow you must have discernment many people think all it takes once you can speak and someone falls they say i am anointed what do you know about the anointing the anointing is more than releasing something mysterious to somebody it must accomplish something this you need more discernment than even the anointing the substance the ability to look at for instance like these people who have been touched now you are an anointed man of god you are finished praying you go to the next thing you see 
insensitivity in the spirit this is not guesswork if you are guessing you will not see the results like this it's not it's not guessing so please learn it i know that this is a place where we value the anointing and there are many of you you are waiting for me to prophesy release impartation after this now it's not it's not just about holding people ah hold this lady hold Mukhtar's wife an anointing is coming on her please hold her her and matter two of them there is i don't know what it is but i'm seeing i don't know why god is doing this thing it's a strange God, God is giving two of them strange favor, strange favor. I see strange favor, strange favor. America, God is giving you access. I'm seeing you like a crown coming on your head. And God is saying he's giving you strange access, strange access, strange access, strange access, strange access. Muas, God is giving strange favor. Strange favor. Strange favor. Strange favor. Hallelujah. I don't know what I'm saying, but this is a word for someone. And the Lord is saying, why make it next year when I have destined it to be this year? Why make it next year? when i have destined it to be this year this is the word of the lord why make it next year this is a word for many people when i've destined it to be this year as i speak to you the word is for you the power of god will locate you why make it next year when i have destined it to be this year it's the year of triumph it's the year of triumph why make it next year just allow me to do my stupidity why make it next year when i have destined it to be this year why make it next year when I have destined it to be this year? My God. Hallelujah. There is a lady here. You have been disappointed with God right now. You actually came help the ushers. You came expecting that i would directly call your case and you, you you pray this thing but now it looks like we're about to pray and i didn't call your case the power of god is coming on you now now as a sign that god had now wherever you are he's locating you now now I command that spirit to leave you. I see you in the spirit. Go now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I stretch my hands now and I command. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Let her go now. Peace to your spirit. Every devil carries his nonsense and lives with you. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Pastor Jake is still praying outside. Okay, we can just do it. This is a listen. There are two moments in every miracle service you should not miss. Ah, there is, I mean, God is just doing certain things. It's like something is really happening. Don't worry about what is happening. Impartations. God, see, let me tell you right now, if the anointing comes on you. Just know that is the answer to your prayer this is not a special once the anointing comes on you just know that your prayer has been answered you understand this is what it doesn't mean if the anoint if you don't fall down it's not answered i'm not saying that but i'm saying this is how god is choosing to confirm to some people now as i'm talking that your prayer no matter how difficult it is no matter how difficult your prayer is Praise the Lord. Now, everyone, please stretch your hands here and pray in the Holy Ghost. Please, Pastor Jakes, come. What you mean? Please. Okay, he's writing something. Just stretch your hands here and pray. 
and pray in the Holy Ghost. Stretch your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost from the depth of your heart. Stretch your hands. Shakato pakata. Stretch your hands here and pray in the Holy Ghost. No, Liva, pray in the Holy Ghost. Stretch your hands. Pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Prophesy in the Holy Ghost. Shake it to go to Toketa. Rakata Kata Makata. So poto so pekete. Miracles, oh God. Testimonies, oh God. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. We prophesy it. We prophesy it. We prophesy it. We prophesy it. Visit impossible situations. I tell you, God is moving. I see a cloud. I see a cloud over this prayer request. That's what I see in the spirit. God is moving upon it. Moving upon it. Moving upon it. The spirit of God is moving over the prayer request. Visiting families. Releasing angels. Releasing angels. Visiting the request. I'm seeing the cloud of God's presence. Visiting the prayer request. Savior, he can move a mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Mighty and everlasting Father, Master of the Universe, the God that answers by fire. We receive answers by fire in the name of Jesus. Angels of God, are you not ministry spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? We receive angelic ministration and direct answers from heaven now in the name of Jesus. The heavens over these requests are open and answers come speedily in the name of Jesus. It has been decreed, it has been ratified. And it is done in the name of Jesus. Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we say thank you. We say thank you exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask, above all that we imagine, is done in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, Father. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we have decreed. On, give Jesus praise. Give Jesus mighty praise. Hallelujah. Please say to me, still come. Pastor Jake's come. I just feel like doing this is, I, I don't always do this, but I want to prophesy over your lives. And in the name of Jesus, they are my friends. But the Lord is telling me to speak over their lives. They are great men of God in power. But in the name of Jesus, the Lord is saying I should prophesy the next dimension. To prophesy a new level. And in the name of Jesus, I speak it. Step into a new dimension. A Jimmy, God is saying I should release grace for access. I command that grace. Strange access. Strange access. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Strange access. Gifted men coming into your life connections with gifted men in the name of jesus 
and pastor jakes god is giving you influence strange influence strange influence strange influence strange influence is a very strange apostolic dimension of influence lord i pray in the name of jesus that you will bless them wherever your wives are i bring them into this experience now 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 wherever they are i prophesy to tosin wherever she is and i speak to hope you are one so i prophesy as it happens to you i bring your wives into this experience in the name of jesus strange levels of access strange levels of access strange levels of influence hallelujah hallelujah let me do this just once i spotted lizzie somewhere one of the oldest year nine lady come she came in from abuja part of the founding people that started this ministry all the way and the lord is saying i should prophesy a release i told you about ladies who used to climb trees when this ministry started no money no nothing they were in welfare they were in worship team at the same time they would climb trees and pluck the firewood for cooking for us for the crusades and the lord is saying i should pray and prophesy and open up a new dimension that it is for her does not mean you cannot receive it you see the thing with prophecy is the moment there is hunger it will still land on your head praise the lord father in the name of jesus i lay my hands right now over lizzie and lord jesus i prophesy i prophesy according to the word that you are giving me i open up a new chapter a new chapter a new chapter shabaka toto barekete zat kaskapas katapas katapas legete to soto pretekes koparia da balaraba a new chapter a new chapter a new chapter a new chapter and as many who desire to drink of this grace a new chapter a new chapter a new chapter as many who desire to drink of this grace a new chapter in the name of jesus a new chapter listen i prophesy to you a new chapter by the power of the holy ghost hallelujah please lift your hands we're rounding up who is this girl come you god has chosen to visit you come come and stand here god is wiping your tears this prayer i'm praying for you will open the tulip gates of your destiny i lay my hands upon you and i command the gates to be open now i stood there and i saw you and the lord said i should open that gate i lay my hands upon you i command the gates to be open be open right now be open right now in the name of jesus christ be open right now we're rounding up we're rounding up please this lady with a uh, yellow blue you come I don't know you but the Lord is asking me to pray for you lift your hands this is a real prayer to usher you into a strange realm of blessings I lay my hands and I remove the embargo from your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ I command uh -uh. I'm praying for you but I'm seeing my hand on you I'm praying for you but I'm seeing my hand on you Jesus, please visit them. Strange visitations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Strange visitations. Lift your hands, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah. I just saw a door open and I saw a name come out. Listen. I saw a name come out and I saw the Okalo family. The Okalo family. This is Okalo family. Okalo family. Okalo family. Okalo family. God is visiting your all three of you. Step into that grace. I open that door now. 
the Okalo family step into that grace open 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 I open that door an age-long witchcraft broken over your family an age-long witchcraft broken over your family an age-long witchcraft broken over your family I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus a dramatic restoration of everything that by the power of witchcraft has tied you down whatever has covered your glory I speak it right now in the name of Jesus let it be open 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 I unveil your glory I unveil your glory I unveil your glory Shaka -ta -ta -ta. I unveil your glory I unveil your glory tonight is a strange night please receive every prophetic word that I'm going to pray for you ah just allow me to do one more thing the spirit of God I have not seen this in a while I'm now seeing the map of Nigeria and I see Benway state the spirit of God is going to Benway right now right now touching people you know how it happens when I speak Benway Benway miracles locate them now oh god people from benway benway strange grace strange grace i break witchcraft benway i'm seeing benway hallelujah hallelujah i don't know if i'm pronouncing it right i'm seeing i know or to go but i'm seeing the o a a at the is there a place like that or to buy or something the power of God I'm seeing that going to that area the Lord is bringing a miracle ends with an A whoever comes from that region in the name of Jesus breakthrough 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 strange breakthrough strange breakthrough Benway 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 I don't know why God is doing this but I'm prophesying it. May the angel of the Lord's presence step into that place. Hallelujah. I'm seeing another name on the map. Emo. 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 Where are they, oh God? Emo. 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 Emo state. Emo state. The anointing of the spirit locates them now. Strangely. Matato Sotota. Emo state. Miracles. Miracles, breakthroughs, signs, wonders, miracles, miracles to evil states by the Spirit of the Living God. Hallelujah. If you're from Cross River, Cross River, Calabar something is happening right now cross river cross river cross river cross river help her help her please hallelujah please lift your hands everyone it's the ministry of signs and wonders Let me talk to you, my dear. This lady looking at me. You, come. The Lord has located you today. Come. Lift your hands. The Lord says I should tell you for shame. He is bringing laughter to your life. For shame. He is bringing laughter to your life. For shame. He is bringing laughter to your life. For shame. He is bringing laughter to your life. Lift your hands. We are rounding up. You've heard me say it again that this is the most powerful part of the service. I want you to believe it. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, the anointing flows through me to you. And I know when the anointing is heaviest. It's only because many of us are already used to some of these things. And so you think when these things are happening, you don't judge the anointing just by physical manifestations. I want to pray for you. Please receive everything I pray for you. Every age-long challenge 
every challenge that has refused to leave I prophesy upon it right now. I command that it comes to an end in your life now. 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 That fair lady, come. This lady, Tyler. Run, come. Lift your hands. I'm still praying. In the name of Jesus. Listen. Whatever has brought shame and dishonor like a stigma to your life, I roll it away right now in the name of Jesus. I roll it away right now in the name of Jesus. I roll it away right now in the name of Jesus. I roll it away right now in the name of Jesus. My dear, look at me. I saw you inside a cave and I'm surprised because we've paid for, for deliverance prayer and I saw you inside a cave you are just trying to push the door that's why I asked you to come out let me I don't know you do I know you where did you come from where where is that I don't know. Yes, I am. I'm going to pray for you God is bringing a major breakthrough two things God is going to throw somebody out of your life I'm not a prophet of doom but it will happen he will reach three days Huh? throw Amen. completely so that you can move forward Amen. I hold your hands in the name of Jesus every deceiver of your destiny will drive them far from you right now in the name of Jesus Christ you need to love Jesus with all your heart right you are a nice person but your relationship with Jesus you can, you can get teachings after this but I want to prophesy on your life God is taking somebody not death though just driving somebody out an unwanted person out of your life i prophesy the kind of favor you have never seen i lay my hands on you and i provoke the heavens to release that favor for you in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare over every family represented here whether your nuclear family your extended family hold on i don't know what has gone wrong but in the name of jesus within now and miracle service match dramatic turn around for families dramatic turn around for families dramatic turn around for families in the name of jesus one of the mysteries responsible for open doors and new levels is the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers i want to pray for you i don't know where they are but one thing I know is they never come on their own. They are called by prophecy. I prophesy to the north. I prophesy to the south. I prophesy to the east. I prophesy to the west. The helper of your destiny. I command them to appear now. 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 Hallelujah. Come. Come and hold my hands. Congratulations. I'm seeing a job. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a very good job. And the Lord is saying I should congratulate you. Look at me. You will stand here and testify before the people of God. All the Holy Ghost said I should tell you is congratulations. And I hold your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, may it come to pass. I decree and declare the results you have not had in 10 years put together in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God in one month 30 days I stand here under the unction of the Holy Ghost 30 days beginning from today step into those results step into those results step into those results Step into those results. Strange dimensions of results. Hallelujah. Whoever has despised you, whether to your knowing or not to your knowing, I pray, may God put them on the scene as he lifts you. May they watch your rising as God honors you. 
I pray for anyone here whose spiritual life has gone down. Prayer life down. Your praise and worship life down. Fasting down. Word life down. In the name of Jesus Christ, I activate fresh grace. Receive it fresh grace. Fresh fire. Outside, receive it fresh grace. Fresh fire. Fresh grace. Hallelujah. Wherever your prosperity is, I pray. May, listen, listen. Hagar carried Ishmael and they were roaming around the desert. They said there was no water. But when an angel appeared, all of a sudden they saw water. That you have not seen it does not mean it's, there, it's not there. I open your eyes to see where God has anointed to bring you financial blessings. I open your eyes in the name of Jesus. I open your eyes to see where God has placed your prosperity. Hallelujah. The plague of death that is looming around this nation, looking for people and families, is, listen, it's like a graph. It rises, then sometimes it relaxes. I'm praying. Whoever calls your name, I'm prophesying this, oh, whether in the secret or the open, to invoke death upon your life, I command the earth to open and swallow them. I command the earth to open and swallow them. Whoever prophesies that it will not be well with you, may misery follow them. The Esther anointing, the unction and the grace that granted Esther uncommon access in the presence of Ahasuerus, Shababa Satalakata, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I release the Esther anointing upon your destiny right now. Take it, I release the Esther anointing upon your destiny. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points and we're done. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Many of us do not understand the mystery of spiritual defense and protection. Listen. I want to pray something that is very powerful in your life. Listen. When you are in trouble and there is nobody to show up for you, it's a cause. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The Bible says, defend you in the day of trouble. There are many of us, if for any reason things go wrong in your life, you are in trouble. There is nobody that can arise as a defense. But I'm prophesying to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, whoever must arise and defend your cause in the presence of your helpers and in the presence of your persecutors, I call them forth right now. In the name of Jesus, may God raise men to be a wall of defense for you in this wicked, um, wicked state that we are living right now in this country. People say, if you don't have anybody, and honestly speaking, somebody can get up and come and seize your land, you and your land and your paper, they will collect it because there is no defense. I'm prophesying again, quarter to shame. May God raise a defense for you. And finally, I want to pray the prayer of Jabez for you. Many of us, ah, many of us have not studied. Honor is not money. Listen, listen. There are many rich people with no honor. Are we together? There are many well-to-do people with no honor. Do you know what honor is? Honor is when God anoints men to lavishly discern and celebrate what you represent without reservation. So for every one person who talks nonsense, there are thousands. Honor. Jabez said, oh, the, the mother bore him in sorrow. You brought shame for me. So I call you Jabez. Honor is more than money, brothers and sisters. The Bible says a good name is better than riches. I pray 
the mantle of honor that by the grace of God has rested upon this ministry in the name that is above all names for as many who have the grace and the discernment to receive take that mantle right now take that mantle right now they don't have to know you but strangers will come to feed your flock receive that grace for honor hallelujah wave your hands to Jesus and praise him wave your hands to Jesus and praise him wave your hands to Jesus and praise him wave your hands thank you Jesus we bless you we lift our hands to the great I am who was and who is and is to come. We lift our hands to the great I am who can come. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.